Ohio State has had a couple of close calls the last two weeks, but the defending national champions are still unbeaten. They've taken an 18-game winning streak into this game against Northwestern, and for the second straight game, they'll be without Craig Krenz, the quarterback. Ohio Stadium, the place to be as Ohio State and Northwestern open up their Big Ten seasons against each other. Ohio State has dominated this matchup. They have won 23 straight games against Northwestern. And we are just one minute away from kickoff as the Buckeyes and Wildcats get ready to play. They did play very close last year. Hi, welcome to Columbus. Pam Ward along with old number 36, Chris Spielman, the uh, former All-American, doing your first game back here right now as a broadcaster. And no Craig Krenzel, so Scott McMullen, he's an experienced senior, gets a start again. Well, you know, the big question about uh, Scott today, is he going to play like a fifth-year senior that hasn't played much, or is he going to play like a guy that can go ahead and, and act like a fifth-year senior and throw the ball all over the place? He played pretty well last week, a little bit hesitant. I look for him to come out and play a big game today and throw the ball down the field. So he's a senior. On the other side of the ball, you have a sophomore, Fred Bazinet. You take away a bad stretch against Air Force, Chris. He's had a good season. Yeah, I think a lot of fans underappreciate Brett Bazinet and what he can do. But I'll tell you what, if you go talk to the opposing players and the opposing coaches, they know this kid can hurt you with his arm. And more importantly, he can hurt you with his feet. He's a double threat. And Jason Wright is at least a double threat, somebody he can go to, a very talented running back. The thing about Jason Wright, the thing I love about him, is he's going to be the first challenge for OSU's rushing defense. He can block, he can catch the ball out of the backfield, and he can run. And he's the best back you never heard of. And he also is a very bright student, has already taken his... Uh pre-med exams, or his uh, med school exams, I should say. We had some nasty storms roll through Columbus last night, but things have cleared up very nicely as the sun is out, calling for some cloudy skies and good football weather, about 58 degrees now, as we get set to kick off with Northwestern and Ohio State. And there is Craig Krenzel on the sidelines as uh, he hurt his elbow two weeks ago against NC State, did not play at all last week against Bowling Green. Yeah, I had a chance to speak with him yesterday, and, and the thing about it, he feels like he's ready to play, but they're being cautious with the elbow. And Jim Tressel is the head coach. All he has done in just his second season was win a national championship. Now back in his third year in charge of Ohio State, he is 2-0 against Northwestern. Randy Walker, conversely, 0-2 against Ohio State. This guy has a lot of ties to the state of Ohio. Went to Miami of Ohio and even was recruited to play football here at Ohio State. And Randy Walker will have his team ready to play. And I'll tell you, that, you know, we've done a number of Northwestern games. The one thing about a Northwestern team and a Randy Walker coach team, they will play hard and get after you every single down. And Northwestern uh, will receive the kickoff after Ohio State won the toss in the third. And Northwestern has been one of the worst teams in the country at returning kicks. We see how they do right off the bat. And Jason Wright decides to take a knee. So they will start from the 20. Only a sophomore, Brett Bassinet, is back as the Wildcat starting quarterback. He threw for a career-high 283 yards in last season's game against the Buckeyes. And he's a tough kid, Chris. Broke his leg last year and wasn't out long. Yeah, he broke his leg and he played two weeks later. And he talked to him. And, and I asked him about the Air Force game yesterday. You know, it, the quarterback got to have a short memory. He has a short memory. He's going to come out and play well today. The very first play, Bazinet with right in the backfield. Goes up top right away, and that is Roger Jordan, the senior from Texas, who picks up five on first down. Jason Wright is indeed the do-everything player for the Wildcats, averaging 118 yards a game on the ground this season. Noah Heron also talented in the backfield for them. The yeah, yeah. offensive line averages 317 pounds per man, fourth heaviest in Division I. A football, Trevor Reese, just a freshman, gets the start at center. On second and five. And there's Wright, first time he carries the ball, and going to lose a couple. A.J. Hawk from Centerville, Ohio, the leading tackler, very aggressive coming up with his first tackle today. The Buckeyes defense giving up only 24 yards a game on the ground. Will Smith and Tim Anderson already have two sacks apiece this season. And we already saw number 47, the least heralded recruit of linebacking crew, A.J. Hawk, a budding star as a sophomore. And Chris Gamble yet to contribute on offense this year, but balls rarely come his way as he is a very good corner. 
you're playing corner, you don't want to hear your name called. That means either they're throwing your way or they're beat, beating you deep. Chris has been solid. After two long, two yard loss to Rice, they go to Jordan. And that is incomplete. Dustin Fox with the coverage. Good job by Dustin Fox of coming across with the long left arm, keeping the body off, avoiding contact. Now, Brett Bazinet, Jordan had Dustin beat to the inside. That's one he's got to go ahead and throw down low where only Jordan can be the receptor. Dustin was up high. The ball was high. He was able to make a play. So a three and out for Northwestern after they gained five yards on first down. Our first look at Brian Huffman, junior from Schaumburg, Illinois. He's already had two kicks blocked this year. Gets that one off. And here is Chris Gamble. Getting it at the 33. And Gamble can electrify a crowd even when he only picks up about nine yards on a return. Pat Durr, one of the starting linebackers for Northwestern, made the stop. Scott McMullen is indeed making his second straight start. Craig Krenzel still out with the injured elbow. McMullen had a touchdown pass and an interception. Also lost a fumble last week, and Jim Tressel says he just merely wants the guy to hold on to the ball today. Yeah, I think you're going to see him open it up a little bit. They limited the game plan, but he is a fifth-year senior, so he understands how this offense works, and he understands the check and audible system to use to his advantage. So the Buckeyes with good field position, starting from the 41, but movement. Ryan Hamby off a little bit too quickly on the right side of the Buckeyes line. That's again, first game jitters and not a lot of time in the first play of the game, especially when you got a team fired up. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Like Northwestern, you give them a hard count, but you got to remind your guys, hey, dude, you got a hard count. <laughs> you don't go. They're supposed to jump. But instead, it was Hamby, the sophomore from Cincinnati, who jumped, and it's now first and 15. Ohio State kicked back to its 36. making a call at the line. And he hands it off to Lydell Ross, who goes right up the gut of that Northwestern defense for about an eight-yard gain. Buckeyes running game came alive last week against Bowling Green. Maurice Hall, who just had that carry, and Lydell Ross combined for over 200 yards. Nick Mangold gets the start at center for the third straight game. Alex Stepanovich is still out with a hurt ankle. Ohio State has a week off next week and then plays Wisconsin. So maybe some of these hurt guys can get healthy. The thing about Ohio State, they're going to try to run the ball. That's a Jim Tressel team. Randy Walker knows that. For play action, plenty of time. And McMullen completes his first pass to Michael Jenkins, who is in the Northwestern Territory. That's a big play for Scott McMullen. Why? Because it's a throw down the field. And what happens is they get the linebacker sucked up for Northwestern and John Pickens he gets sucked up. John, Michael Jenkins is running a nice little in route. Jenkins sucked up on the play action and is pitch and catch. Too easy. Jenkins, you get your depth as a linebacker. Yeah, Jenkins, it did look easy. One of the team captains, a senior. 15-yard gain and a first down for the Buckeyes on the 41 of the Wildcats. McMullen, this time, goes against the grain to Ryan Hamby. And he picks up about four yards. Northwestern's defense is coming off an impressive six-sack game against Duke. That was their grand total for all of last season. Warren Howard, very aggressive from his defensive end spot. Pat Durr back in the middle after missing all of last season with a blown-out knee. Tim McGargle also contributes at that position. And the Wildcats secondary features three players that have switched over from offense, including Jeff Backus, who is right here from Columbus, Ohio completed by Ohio State. Just a fine athlete, played running back at Northwestern, wide receiver, now he's out there in the corner. Ross again, and a little bit more room, but he stopped about a yard short of the first down. Barry Cofield and Dominic Price converged to make the stop. Northwestern's defense gave up over 300 yards on the ground, and it's a credit to their kids and their coaching staff. They've cut that in half, and they have their biggest challenge ahead of them today playing Ohio State, because Ohio State has a mentality that they're going to run the football. What they have to do is get their reads properly, not get sucked up on the play action fake like they did earlier, but they got to play run and make sure they get their depth of pass cover. And yes, and first time, in fact, last week, Duke only ran for 90 yards. First time since 1999. Any team has run for less than 100 against Northwestern. And the fullback close to the first down marker. 
Brandon doesn't get a lot of carries if you're a fullback in the Ohio State offense. You are a guard in the backfield. So Brandon said, let me hold on to this football. I'm not going to break it. That's a nice kill by the linebacker. The Garza. Not a way to step up in there. Not enough, though, to prohibit the first down. In fact, that is Brandon's second carry of the season. Craig on there. He's got the, the good, the bad visor on. It's the bad <laughs> visor because he's not playing. The good visor, he's playing towards the end of the game. That's the bad visor. He wants to get in there, but they're being smart with him and not letting him play and trying to get him an extra week's rest on the elbow. There is another off. There is an off week. There's a fumble from Maurice Hall. And Demaris Wilson came in and made the stop, and Mullen was able to jump on it, but that's a nine-yard loss. Yeah, Demaris gets a great get off here. You see him come from your outside. Nobody blocks him. He's right running Scott Freed in the football. And I like it because he tackles the ball. It's a good heads-up play by Scott McMullen on getting on the football. But Northwestern needs little wins like that, little successes to stop drives, force Ohio State into taking long drives to keep the game short. They want to shorten the game as much as they can. That's why they're going to a huddle offense this year as opposed to no huddle, a pasture. You see that combo of Ross and Hall over 200 yards last week after struggling earlier in the season, particularly against NC State. Nine-yard loss, and Mullen to Jenkins. And Jenkins is dragged down around the 29-yard line by Jeff Backus. Yeah, Michael Jenkins is 6'5". He's a big target. Jeff Backus is 5'9". And what happens is here, Jeff gets his eyes peeking inside on the backfield. Michael Jenkins is going to come and run a slant. And they run a fake, fake sweep right here. There's a pitch, and there's a quick slant. And Jeff's peeking. And if you're going to jam him, Jeff, you got to come up and hit him. Don't come up and not hit him because Michael will make you miss. And he's got a lot of field to work with. He'll make you fool out of you. Michael's a good player, possibly a number one draft pick. So Jeff is going to get his hands on him. You want to come up and disrupt the time of the route. Put hands in his chest. Well, quite an assignment, too, for a guy like Backus, who's his first year as a defensive back. And now that pass is complete to Drew Carter, just enough for the first down. That was a third and nine. Well, it's a good read by Scott McMullen. Now they have three guys split out to one side, two on the other side. He's going to work the three wide receiver side. And understand the targets that he's thrown to. They're 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, working against guys under six foot. So Scott's just got to put the ball in the area. And these guys will win most jump balls. But it's a good job by Drew catching the ball and catching in transition, making the first down, not slowing down before he starts to run. So that gives them that first down at the 19. Hall gets a big hole on the right side, and he is ankle tackled by McGargle, or else he might have been off to the races. I'm going to show you something here. I want to show you something what a center can do. If you have a center that has the ability to pull around like this, that gives you an extra benefit. You're going to get a down block, and your center's pulling around. That gives you good angles to block. He gets a kick-out block. Maurice Hall just runs the space. But when you have a center with that kind of athletic ability to be able to snap the ball and pull, that is a bonus for your offensive running game. That throw was blocked nicely on that play. That was a seven-yard gain. Second and three now from the 12. Ross stacked up, but he breaks free. Ross towards the end zone, and the Buckeyes have scored. Well, it's a good time between Maurice Hall and Lydell Ross, and they're kind of fighting to compete for carries. And what you'll see, Lydell will not let one man bring him down. He hits it up in there, he bounces out. Pickens gets beat to the outside. The tight end maintained his block on him, and it's speed to the corner of the end zone. And when you have speed, you can get to the corner like Lydell. So Ross takes it in for his fifth rushing touchdown of the season, 17th of his career. Mike Nugent adds the extra point. Great second effort has given the Buckeyes a 7 nothing lead. Chris Fieldman's first game back here as a broadcaster. And they're showing a little highlight reel of you up there, Chris, right now as they welcome you back to Columbus. Well, you know, the, the funny thing I learned is that the, the older you get, the better you oh. get. You know, the stats <laughs> seem to get better and better, but it was such a pleasure and an honor to play here and uh, I'm just happy to be back and looking forward to a good football game. I see Northwestern make a run. Hey, we just missed on the on the uh, big scoreboard. They had your, your little cheesy mustache shot. Yeah, well, you know, that, that was in style back then. 
When did you shave the mustache? After football or? I, I don't know. You don't remember? After puberty, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we were really, all serious, just a terrific linebacker here. Uh, at, well, you were, Chris. Come on. I was, I was one of the guys. Yeah, you did all right with the Lions, too, in the NFL. And Ohio State did great on their first drive. As that's yet another touchback. Lionel Ross, a 12-yard touchdown run. As that... Uh, has given Ohio State a 7-0 lead. And we have a flag down on that. It may perhaps offsides well, against Ohio State. Pam, it's important for Northwestern if they want to stay in this ball game early. They got to take the first punch of Ohio State. Now they got to counter. Offside. This is a huge drive for them in a huge series. And it's a very difficult Five defense to counter on. Especially a defense that starts fast. Lydell Ross was one main reason why they got off to that quick start, Chris. Again, Lydell Ross is a guy that's starting to feel healthy. He wasn't healthy in the first three games. He started to pick it up last week a little bit. Here you see the balance and the vision to pop it outside and the speed to get to the corner. And that's the one thing Ohio State does have a tailback. Even with the loss of Maurice Porrette, they do have depth with Maurice Hall and Lydell Ross. And Ross capped off that 59-yard scoring run. He was bothered by a hurt toe earlier in the season. Two third downs on that drive, and McMullen looking sharp on that drive, too. Four for four for 40 yards. Bro. Well, it's important for Scott's psyche, too. Now, they were controlled passes. I mean, he threw the deep in cut to Michael Jensen. The rest were, were that little slants. And Northwestern has to be able to step up and challenge those guys, or Ohio State will do three-step drops all the day because of the soft position that the corners are playing. Now, if they step up and press, Northwestern might force, be forced to do that to take away those soft slants. After the offside, the re-kick, and that goes into the end zone for the touchback as we send you back to Matt Weiner. Pam, Taco Bell takes us to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Bounce back day for the Wolverines. This is Chris Perry. Remember, he had just 26 yards rushing at Oregon. He's going to surpass that on this run alone. Takes it down. And then John Navar goes to the air. Turned out to be a bad idea. Leonard Bryant has the pick for Indiana. Nothing doing. Zeros on the board. All right, Matt, how about those Hoosiers with the big stop? Ray Bogenreed, the tight end, with that catch. Well, I like the call because Jason Wright, obviously your biggest threat. And Ohio State knows they want Northwestern wants to get Jason in the football, so they come out with the bootleg but it was good, solid, disciplined defense by Nate Sally right there to stay on his coverage and make the tackle. But still, a successful play from Northwestern because even though you didn't get yardage, you still put in a mindset that you have bootleg in your arsenal and you, you've got to defend that if you're the Buckeye defense. So I might see that later. That was indeed just a one-yard gain. And Bazinet out of the shotgun. Pressure coming. Three Buckeyes, and he almost gets it picked off. Robert Reynolds got a finger on it. Well, Ohio State will blitz, and they'll blitz. They're going to come over and get on the bench and talk about <laughs> it, and they're going to blitz. That's what they do. And they have the corners and the personnel to do that and play man-to-man -man defense, so they come out with a variety of zones and uh, man blitzes. Illegal participation. There were 12 players on the defense. No wonder it opened up. Yeah. After well, it looked like there were so many red shirts. We're talking to Mark D'Antonio yesterday. Pan, they play 18 to 20 guys on their defense. Now, that's incredible. That's a lot of depth. And these are the problems that you might have because guys will not communicate, hey, I'm in for you, and don't come out. And that's often a, a substitution problem. And they're the career starts for the Northwestern offensive line. And all by themselves, Tim Anderson and Will Smith have not beat just two guys for Ohio State. It is a, an offensive line. They have juggled a bit with personnel for Northwestern. Jason Wright. A little bit of running room. Reynolds and Sally wrap him up. Well, Jason Wright's a guy, I watched film on him, and I'm telling you, he made some Barry Sander-esque cuts yesterday. I mean, he is a natural running back. This is only his second full year of playing running back, but he is really a good football player, and he does put the student in student athlete, by the way. Jason Wright, 149 yards and two touchdowns last week against Duke. And you see that he is uh, one of the best, certainly, at least in the free Big Ten schedule as far as Big Ten running backs go. Pitchett Wright gives it up to Ashton Akins. And he fumbles. 
Ohio State gets the football. That's Robert Reynolds. And Northwestern hurts itself. Got to hold on to the football. Well, when you're playing a fast, pursuing defense like Ohio State, this is a good play to call. Watch Brett Bazin. He's going to come out and block All-American Will Smith. Smith. But if you're Aikens, you got to hold on to the football. He loses the ball. And I like the Robert Reynolds there. Look at that athletic ability. He controlled his feet. He picked the ball up, and he tried to make something happen. I couldn't see who stripped it out of there. The ball's on the ground. Good things happen when you run to the football. It's a good call by Northwestern to slow him down. But like you said, Pam, if you're Northwestern coming into the horseshoe, you cannot have turnovers. And they turn it over in their own territory. At the 46-yard line, you see Northwestern with the eighth fumble so far. That was a big loss. Big loss on that fumble. So here comes it Mullen and the rest of the offense. Hall's turn to get the football. And he is tackled down by Dominic Price. Some SEC football coming your way tonight at 7.45 Eastern on ESPN. New Holtz in South Carolina go to Knoxville, trying to upset number eight in Tennessee. And at 9 Eastern on ESPN2, LSU coming off that huge win over Georgia goes into Starkville to take on Mississippi State. South Carolina and Tennessee also available on ESPN HD, ESPN's new high-definition service. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Well, Tennessee looks to be back, don't they? Yes, indeed. Running the football like they did uh, in years previous. They had a lot of healthy guys. Mississippi State struggling, on the other hand, down in Starkville. Still looking for their first win. McMullen gets hit, and it is almost caught. Michael Jennings, Jenkins able to get a hand on it, but couldn't gather it in. And Michael's got to put two hands. Jenkins got to put two hands up to catch the football. They're, you know, we're all good, but this is what causes it. And I'll tell you, Scott McMullen's going to take a shot. He's going to come in here and take a lick. But he stays in there, hangs in there, and makes the throw. And here's the ball. The rule is, if it touches a hangnail, you got to catch it. That's a two-hand grab. You don't go up with one hand. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about making highlights later. You go up with two hands. That's a good job of pressure by Lauren Howard for Northwest from getting in there and hitting Scott McMullen. But Scott hung in there and made a nice throw across the field. Lauren had a good hit on him. That's nice. Now Howard is known for that, too. Yeah, he's a tough guy. So after McMullen's first incompletion, it was not his fault on the drop by Jenkins. He goes across the middle of the field to Roy Hall. And that should be another first down for the Buckeyes. Well, a dangerous throw. But I told you, his nickname is Gunslinger, and you see why. That's a dangerous throw to make when you're rolling to your right and you throw back to the middle of the field because you're bringing defenders with you as you're rolling. The defense is adjusting. Ball takes longer to get there. But Roy Hall did a great job of coming back for the football. And Scott McMullen is lighting it up right now. McMullen now five of six, 48 yards. Again, that one incompletion should have been a long completion to Jenkins, but he tried to one-hand it. First and 10 now from the 35. McMullen again going in the air, and that is a terrific grab by Big Ben Hartsock. As we send him that line of flat. Hi, Pam. Iowa into the top ten in the rankings into East Lansing on the field. Jeff Smoker to Zeal Cavanaugh. 17 yards, seven touchdown pass of the season. Spartans up 7-0. John L's got him going up there in East Lansing. Good to see Jeff Smoker come off. Yep. Play well after having his problems. Been through a tough time. Coming back, though. Uh, they try to rebuild that program. Dangerous uh, game, perhaps, for Iowa as they are down early to Michigan State. Ross, who has the touchdown for Ohio State, doesn't get much. Dominic Price, the strong safety, coming up to make his third tackle. Northwestern is now shuffling in defensive linemen. That's one thing they, if they want to stay in this ball game. They got to keep this offense off the field, but they do. They're better, so much better defensively than last year that they have the ability to start shuffling guys in and out, keep fresh bodies coming and attacking the Ohio State offensive line. Indeed, one of the worst defenses in the country last year. You already mentioned it, Chris. They gave up 313 yards per game on the ground. They've cut that to 152 per game coming into this one. Second and seven. McMullen throws behind Jenkins. And that falls incomplete. Just go to, going back a few plays, that pass to Ben Hartsock was the exact 
same play that they ran to Michael Jenkins. They realized Michael Jenkins was open. They wanted to see if Northwestern would get it fixed defensively. They didn't. They just came back and ran the same play out of a different formation with a different receiver. And the difference in the play was Hartsock went up and caught it with two hands, while Michael went up and caught it with one hand, or tried to catch it with one hand. That was Hartsock's 10th catch of the season. Third and seven, another test for this Northwestern defense already down seven to nothing. The big play. Hard sock in motion. Krenzel looking left the entire way towards Jenkins, and he leads him just a little bit too much. Okay, they had to slant and go on, and I'll tell you, Pat Durr, the middle linebacker, does a good job. They motion to trips, and what they're trying to do is work the back side of trips, the single receiver side. Watch Pat Durr. He's going to come out here and take away the slant. He's looking for Michael Jenkins. He gets a good break on the ball. Michael goes ahead and breaks it to the corner. Scott throws one up there to only where Michael Jenkins can get it, but just a little bit too far. Great job by Pat Durr of taking away the initial read in the initial route. So Scott McMullen with that incompletion. We get our first look at Mike Nugent. They are not booing. They are saying Nuge for the kicker. And he nails it home from 32 yards out. That's a win for Northwestern's defense, though. They held him to the field goal. Holding him to the field goal after the fumble. It's 10-0 Buckeyes. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Get lost in a Reese's. Welcome back to... Ohio State where the Buckeyes have gotten a 32-yard field goal from Mike Nugent. They lead Northwestern now 10 to nothing. And they are doing quite well in the first quarter. It's been finishing games, Chris, that's been the problem. Yeah, that's surprising. I mean, last year they won a lot of close games, and, and it was due to good opponents. This year they've let teams back in the game, and they're really focused on if they get a team down to go ahead and bury them while they're down. Nine of their last 11 wins have come by seven points or less, and they blew consecutive 24-7 leads the last two weeks against Bowling Green, held on to win 24-17 in that classic game against NC State when uh, they won in triple overtime, 44-38, two weeks ago. Yeah, Northwestern knows that. They know that this team struggles finishing games, so just because they're down 10 nothing in the first quarter, there's no panic. You stay with your game plan, you know what your strengths are, and keep working it. Uh, Brett Bazinet handing off to Jason Wright. And Wright breaks free around the right side of that line and picks up about nine yards. You know, I was talking about Jason Wright earlier, Pam. The one thing I said that I noticed when he was watched film was that he has great ability to make sharp cuts. He made a great cut right there, and bam, he has a nice little burst to get the ball downfield. Take a look at it again right here. There's one cut. That's nice. There's a cut right there. That's beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. He is the best back you've never heard of. I'm telling you, he's a good football player. Right, a senior from Diamond Bar, California, listed at 5'10". Go right back to him. A.J. Hawk makes the stop as we send you to Matt Weiner for an update on Indiana, Matt. Hi, Pam and Michigan. Don't, don't leave them out of the equation. The Wolverines have already turned it over twice on a couple of interceptions, but they stop the Hoosiers and get the ball back to the punt return, and Steve Reston is going 68 yards. Some shoddy tackling, but he'll take it 7-0, Big Blue at home. Indiana and Michigan. So Michigan with that big special teams play goes up. Michigan will be hosting Ohio State on November 27th. Goes out the regular season. Penalties down on this play. Logan Wright jumped out a little bit quick, trying to get down the field. The snap. Ball start. Right in. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains first up. Randy Walker taking over this Northwestern team, leading them to that Big Ten championship back in 2000. 20 and 30 now overall in his fifth year. Great success at Miami of Ohio before he came here. And in these championships, all three of them, they did not play Ohio State. Well, that's, uh, that's when you have 11 teams in the Big Ten, that's what happens to you. And uh, they took advantage of the other teams that did play and played well. Well deserved championship. This is Brett Bazinet can do. A late flight coming in now. And Bazinet hit on that Ohio State sideline. 
You know, we, we talked to Coach Trestle about some penalties, and I think it's against Northwestern. But they've been having problems with the penalties, and he doesn't mind aggressive penalties. You don't want to take cheap shots, but you don't want to have it. There's a chop block. Can't do that. Nope. Bad news. See, Dustin Fox does a good job of pulling off the hit right there. That wasn't a call. It was a block downfield. I believe it was a block below the waist from behind, which is dangerous. A lot of guys can get hurt that Illegal way. A lot of block. ankle and knee injuries happen that way. On the offense, the outside receiver blocks down less than 10 yards. That's a 15-yard penalty. You know, I can't really tell right there. That's almost like a leg whip. See that leg coming up? With, yep, it's tough. Well, we saw that uh, downfield blocking. You have to block high. So the parameters within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage, and that negates that Bazinet gain. And Bazinet goes down. Will Smith with his third sack of the season. Here's Matt Weiner. Pam, Minnesota into Happy Valley today, and they'll be happy about this. Got to be happy with the production of Marion Barber III. 11-yard touchdown there. It's 11th of the season, and the Gophers up 7-0. Matt, Minnesota with its first real test of the season as uh, they wallop their out-of-conference opponents for at least 40 points a game in their first four, but being tested on the road and so far so good. How about second and 33? Not big, good. Big screen down, screen draw. And instead, Wright gets the football and gets pushed back. A.J. Hawk coming up to make the stop, and Chris, you had a Great conversation with A.J., linebacker, linebacker yesterday. And we'll hear bits of that throughout the game. Yeah, he's a kid that was a, a true freshman last year, came in and contributed, and keeps getting better and better and better. And he seems to be the next heir apparent to being one of those Ohio State Buckeye linebackers. He's a good player, he's a smart player. And a guy that is, is probably the most instinctive linebacker on this football team. He's just a sophomore, leading his team in tackles. Third and 29. Goes into the horseshoe, gives Bazinet an ear fall, and then he wisely throws it out of bounds. I talked to Randy Walker yesterday, and I said, what did you tell your quarterback, Brett Bazinet? He said, Brett, throw it quick. And you have to, because of the pressure that Ohio State can bring, not only with four guys, but when they decide to blitz, they have so many schemes, they just come at you from different angles. Now, they're going to take a look at it. Northwestern coaches are up here in the box. They'll take a look at it and try to find and exploit the weakness of the pressure package that Ohio State defense brings to the table. This gamble awaits the Brian Huffman punt from his 50. Remember again, Huffman has had a couple of them blocked this year. That one away cleanly. Good punt as Gamble has to retreat back to his 37. Escapes the initial surge and then goes down on his 41. Darrell Jenkins making the stop. Ohio State, great field possession again. Position again, and they're up by 10. Ohio State off to a terrific start against Northwestern, leading 10 to nothing. And they have the football as a new quarterback comes in. Justin Zwick, freshman from Maslin, Ohio, has replaced Scott McMullen. I like the move because you want to get this guy experience as much as you can when the game's on the line. Doesn't do much good to do mop up with you. Putting in here, get experience when the game means something. And he hands it off to Maurice Hall, who gets nothing. We send you to Matt Weiner. All right, let's check in one more time on Minnesota. Lawrence Maroney this time with the Gophers up 7-0 from four yards out. Make it four yards in. And Golden Gophers up 14-0 on Penn State. Michigan State, surprising number nine, Iowa in East Lansing, up 14-0. Jeff Smoker, a pair of touchdowns. All right, Matt, some great games on this uh, opening weekend of the uh, Big Ten schedule. Minnesota plays at Northwestern next week. With all the time in the world to find Maurice Hall out of the backfield. Picks up about five. John Pickens, the junior linebacker, makes the stop. A good job by both Durr and Pickens, and what they're doing is dropping off and breaking up and letting the ball be caught underneath and making a great catch. There's Scott McMullen getting a little rest. Going ahead and contributing to Justin Zwick being a senior leader. There's two senior leaders right there. Those two guys are pretty good guys to have uh, 
circle and uh, signal and plays into him. And it's good for Justin to get this real time experience. Oh, and six passes completed to five different receivers. 36, the freshman Zwick. They're giving him time. A little bit of contact, but no flag. It's Drew Carter. He's yeah. unable to bring it in. Zwick had a little hesitation right there. He didn't let it rip. He didn't trust it yet. It gave the Northwestern defensive back time to break up and make and break on the pass and make a great play. Watch the hesitation right there. See, there's a little pump. You see the elbow hitch? If he would have threw that hitch, if he would have threw that ball when he would have left his hands, he would have had it. You see a great break by the defensive back getting that right hand in there. And that's a nice job by the Northwestern corner. That's Marvin Ward Marvin. from uh, Landover, Maryland. B.J. Sanders' first punt, fielded by Kunle Patrick. And Patrick gets it up past the 20-yard line, 12-yard return on a 45-yard punt. <laughs> Sunday night, two high-scoring offenses meet. Peyton Manning, Edron James, and the Colts visit Aaron Brooks in the Big Easy in New Orleans. Colts and Saints catch them 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN HD. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. They're excited in Indianapolis. The Colts, 3-0, first time since 1996. They've gotten out of the gate so quickly, and Peyton Manning gets to go home to New Orleans. Northwestern needs to get something going there. They're playing the whole game on their side of the football field just to give their defense a rest. No rest for Jason Wright. As he goes up the middle, Tim Anderson making his first stop for the Buckeyes. And even to give their defense a rest, to get some field position, to change the battle, to do something. They need to get some type of momentum, at least the first down. We're going to get a little break here because the first quarter has come to a close. Ohio State up 10-0. Getting ready to, be, to get the second quarter underway as Ohio State leads Northwestern 10 to nothing. Second down play, and Noah Heron, his first opportunity to strut his stuff, and he's able to pick up a first down in 12 yards. Let's take a look at our ESPN2 game track. If you're just joining us, Ohio State got off to a very good start. Lydell Ross with a 12-yard touchdown run, giving a 7 nothing lead, plus the midway through the first quarter. And then early mistakes on a little uh, trick play. Ashton Aikens fumbles. Robert Reynolds picks it up. And that culminates with a Mike Nugent field goal to give Ohio State this 10 0 lead. Northwestern seems to find a little niche running the game. That time they came with two backs. They haven't seen much of that so far this, this ball game. Right. One of their backs picking up between three and four yards. 23 straight times Northwestern has come up short against Ohio State. The last win was back in 1971 here in Columbus. They won 14 to 10, and it is not only the longest active streak in the Big Ten, but the longest streak in Big Ten history, Chris. Well, you know, we are talking to Northwestern kids right yesterday, and uh, they're, they're quite optimistic about this game. They're, it's their shot. They're shot at the title. They've got to play the national champs. They can knock them off here at all. What greater way to break that streak? Not going to do it that way as Wright is enveloped in his own backfield. We take you back to Matt Weiner. And the Wolverines of Michigan rebounding nicely after the loss at Oregon. The Michigan defense, the only one in the country which has not allowed a touchdown pass. They have scored a couple. Jeremy Lasour for the second straight week gets to the end zone. Michigan up 14-0. The Anik the struggle a little bit. You knew Michigan was going to bounce back big this week. Yep. Oregon has a tough game later on today themselves as uh, they take on uh, Washington State. So that could be a, a bounce back game in the uh, wrong way for the Ducks if they're not careful. Third and 11 for the Wildcats. Bazinet on top and it is complete in front of Chris Gamble. That's Mark Fillmore with the grab. It's a nice job of the Northwestern offensive line and running backs picking up the blitz. Brett Bazinet hanging in the pocket and delivering a strike to Fillmore, knowing he was going to take a shot. Watch Fillmore where the ball's from. He comes back nicely for the ball. Gamble got away with one. He had a hand up there. Good job by Mark Fillmore. Concentrating, bringing the ball in, but Brett Bazinet hanging in there, throwing the ball over. Only Fillmore could get it, and knowing he was taking a shot. For the very first time today, Northwestern has crossed midfield. Noah Heron gets it, picks up about seven as we take you back to Matt Weiner. 
All right, Pam, UConn entering the Big East. Virginia Tech about to leave the Big East. They meet in the middle today in Blacksburg. Brian Randall, look at the catch by Ernest Wilford. 28 yards, 10 nothing Hokies. Talk about double threats. Oh. I mean, Brian Randall is a true double threat. That guy can do a lot of different things. He's magic back then. Wilford with that fantastic catch. Tech up on UConn. Heron, nowhere to go. A.J. Hawk. We have him already with eight tackles, Chris. He needs to slow down. He's going to start breaking some <laughs> records around here that don't need to be broken. Well, A.J. does a nice job here. Noah Heron's a big, strong kid, a good back. He tries to stiff arm A.J. Hawk. A.J. Hawk says that stiff arm does not go here in Buckeye Stadium. <laughs> a good job of Hawk time around. And this defense, Chris, is just, I mean, this, this almost looks like a mistake. We're averaging yeah. less than a yard per game. A yard per carry, rather. And they're doing it with a lot of guys. Like I said, they play 18 to 20 guys per game. Now Bazinet going through the air. He completes it to Kunle Patrick for the first down. That's a nice job and a good call by Randy Walker. Patrick is the guy they like to get his, the ball into his hands and let him do damage after he catches it. They put him on the freshman, Dante Whitner. But what they're going to do is clear out, clear out, clear out, and run a little outcut right there. There's the clear out and the outcut. Three levels. Dante Whitner slow get to his coverage. And Bazinet does not miss those short little outcuts and option routes. The Kunle Patrick. Patrick doesn't miss many himself. That's now, he's now caught a pass in 39 straight games. That's the best active streak in Division 1A football. That misfires for Roger Jordan. There is Kunle Patrick. Number one in the country. Catching passes as far as consecutive games go. We've been doing games a couple years. It seems like, he, you know, he's been around a long time yeah. now. He's, a, he's an established veteran. He's a good, solid player, and he knows the system and the scheme. Mark D'Antonio, the defensive coordinator for Ohio State, told us yesterday that these receivers are impressive because they know where to go, and they don't make mistakes running routes. Patrick, a senior from Brooklyn, New York, his third season as a starter at Northwestern. Jason Wright, a little bit of daylight, closed up quickly as he picked up about four Hawks. And Bobby Carpenter in on the stop. And you once had a 29 tackle game, right, Chris? Yeah, that's too many. Because the running back had 300 <laughs> yards and we lost the game. Really? Yeah. Who was the running back, do you remember? Jamie Morris. Michigan. Michigan, of course, Michigan. Now, Bobby Carpenter's an interesting story. And Randy Walker actually played with Bobby's dad at Miami. He was Rob Carpenter, who later went on to be a great running back oh, in the yeah. NFL for the, the Oilers and the Giants. Scary when their kids are in college yes. now, huh? And I remember them, yeah. <laughs> I am getting old. Well, Bazinet to the air, and he completes it for a first down to Roger Jordan, another senior receiver. So Northwestern's had some uh, success through the air on this uh, possession. Yeah, and Bazinet, like we told you in the beginning, and he's a guy that can hurt you, and he'll throw the ball and make the tough throw. But the one thing that I like is the offensive line is starting to high-five each other because they're keeping all the Buckeyes out of there, and he's delivering strikes. And Jordan is a big, tall target, too. Now, he's 6'3", 215, 220 pounds. He's a big target. All you got to do is throw it there. They'll catch it now. Just get it to their hands. Batson is a good quarterback. Now it's first and 10 from the 20. And right. Can't get around the corner. Miss, uh, loses a couple of yards. Nate Sally coming up from the safety position. And one of the things about the Buckeye defense that stands out is they can run to the ball. They're very fast. See right here, his penetration. Pickcock gets the guy knocked into the back door. That's Simon Frazier, rather. Nate Sally filling fast from a safety position. You can have your safety coming up and not in a blitz, making a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. He's getting a good read on people and has good flow to the football. Sally had a career high eight tackles last week against Bowling Green and was well on his way to getting close to that. We have him on official with six today. And J.J. Hart will be coming. Here he comes. Pick him up, and Jordan catches the ball, slips a tackle. And it stopped just short of the first down. That's it. That's Northwestern's offense right there. They read the blitz. You know, I, I'm sitting there circling A.J. Hawk because I can read the blitz from up here. Bassett certainly can read the blitz. And what you want to do is throw away from the blitz situation with trips coverage. You got a one-on-one -on -one matchup there. Jordan against Gamble. And he beats him on the inside. Chris goes for the strip. Make the tackle, Chris. Wrap your arms. If the guy catches the ball, you make the tackle and secure it. He spreads the ball around right there. You see, he'll, he'll spread the wealth. Everybody's happy if you're a receiver for Northwestern. Noah Heron on that carry 
third and very short. Close to the first down. And Noah Heron's a nice little changeup now. He's 232 pounds. And he's a nice little power back. He can do some damage catching the ball in the backfield. That is indeed a first down. You see the reception leaders, that, as you said, Chris, spreading it around. Jordan and Patrick, co-leaders coming in. Ashton Aikens catching. Uh, 13 coming in, and now Roger Jordan is the leader. Well, the thing, too, Pam, is to put pressure on defense because as a defense coordinator game plan, okay, do we need to take Jordan out of the game? They say, go ahead, fine. We got guys that have 15, 13, and 9. They spread the ball around, so you really can't focus on taking anybody out of the game. And also throw to their running backs as well. And there's Heron trying to get around the left side of the line, and he is tripped down from line of scrimmage. Marcus Green getting in there. Again, though, you see the power of Noah Heron. He's built low to the ground. He's squatty and stocky and all that good stuff. And he's a wide body. It's tough to wrap your arms around him. Marcus is no little guy either now. You know, Marcus comes in there pretty big, pretty stout himself. About 290 he's listed as that. Heron had a 69 yard touchdown run last week against Duke, the big guy. Second and goal from the eight. Right then, Roger Jordan. Number four, Bazinet holds on to it, slips a tackle. Jordan might be called for a hold on the uh, with the tackle in the end zone as a flag comes down. Now they held A.J. Hawk, and he really didn't need to hold A.J. Hawk. Tough call. Tough call against Northwestern. Why? Because you did not need to hold the blitzy linebacker. Bazinet took care of him himself. Watch right here, you're gonna see the hole coming right here. He kind of pushed him in the back. I don't know if that was a hold. But Bassinet took care of AJ Hawk himself with a nice little move. AJ's coming in. Oh, he almost had a bank break. Pushed him in the back. Now, I don't know if that's holding. Well, he might be diving on him, but not holding. That was Zach Streif who uh, yeah. who had that tackle, and uh, Roger Gordon was kind of locked up in the end zone with Chris Gamble, but apparently they threw the flag on Streif. That was on Streif. So it's second and goal now as they get pushed back to the 18. Western going the long way. Time? Not time. Bobby Carpenter coming in as Bazinet held on to it. Everyone was covered. And we talked earlier, talking to Coach Randy Walker, what does Bassinet have to do tomorrow? Randy said, Chris, he's got to throw it quick. You cannot hold into the football. Make up your mind. Either throw it into the ground, give somebody a souvenir, step up into the pocket, do something, but do not hold on the football and stop his feet. Feet aren't moving. He's froze. If you freeze against his defense, they'll make you pay. So Carpenter coming up with the sack. Northwestern continues to retreat. Now third and goal from the 23. And the flag comes down. Perhaps a delay coming up against the Wildcats. Third to the snap. Delay of game. Offense. Third and 28 coming up, Chris. See, these are mistakes that they can't have. I mean, you're down in the red zone. They had a touchdown call back because of a holding. Now they're getting themselves. They have not tried a field goal yet this whole year. They don't even know if they kick a field goal. They are 0 for 2 in field goal. Slade Marshide, their freshman place kicker, so they are not particularly strong in that area. Untested, as Chris said. Bazinet, third and goal. And he goes down at the 18. That's a great job by Bazinet because he, you know, he beat a pretty good athlete right there, and a pretty good athlete is Chris Gamble. But I tell you what, I liked what Chris Gamble did. He didn't quit on the play. He was entered, uh, ended up chasing Bazinet from behind, but Bazinet beat him with his feet and was able to give their kicker much better position to knock one through the uprights. And they are one of three teams in Division One A not to kick a field goal this season. Larshide has missed from 20 yards and 39. This is a 35-yarder for the freshman. This will be the first of his career. Good hold on a so-so snap, and he misses it. Yanks it wide left. So Northwestern continues to struggle, still down 10 nothing. We will be joined by John Cooper, the former head coach here at Ohio State. We will return. 
Northwestern had the football for almost nine minutes but came away empty with the missed field goal as they continue to trail Ohio State 10 nothing. And we're joined now by John Cooper, the old head coach here from Ohio State. Good to have you. Well, thanks for having me up here. It's my pleasure. And uh, so far, Northwestern has had some chances here, Coach, but have not capitalized as uh, Ross gets a couple of yards there for I Ohio State. I think they State. got a little momentum when Ohio State substituted their redshirt freshman quarterback. When they put Zwick in the game, it looked to me like that Ohio State relaxed a little bit, three and out, and then Northwestern carried... Had, a, had about an 18 play series. Unfortunately, they didn't score, Chris. Yeah, I, would, I mean, would you do that in this coaching situation? You know, you have an injured uh, senior in Craig Krenzel's McMullen's backup. You might have to go to Zwick, put him in the game when it counts. Not not this early in the ball game, yeah. uh, particularly when I've had some close ball games. I think I would try <laughs> yeah. to get maybe a three or four touchdown lead before I made that substitution. Ohio State has had nothing but close ball games, and they're making that decision with a 14 to nothing lead. McMullen is back in the game as Ross picks up about three yards and I'm if I'm a defensive player coach like Chris Spielman was I heard he was a pretty good defensive player if, if I see that that Richard freshman coming in that early in the game it kind of fire me up a little bit it's almost well, like they're saying hey we got this game won first of all Chris wasn't a, a good player he was a great <laughs> yeah. player for the Ohio State and, and also in pro football but you're exactly right I guarantee you Randy Walker Chris got his team on the sideline and said look they're playing a redshirt freshman against us. But, you know, that's that's embarrassing. So I think Randy used that as motivation. Yeah, kind of lack of respect. I mean, Northwestern defense seems to be playing with a little bit more emotion. You see how they respond to an empty backfield set. Tough matching up in the back end for Northwestern. On third and three, and McMullen gets it knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Good play by McGargle. Yeah, McGargle, I, I tell you, anytime there's a three-step drop, if you're a blitzing linebacker or defensive line, hands up. You know, that's what you have to do to handle the three-step drop is get your hands up. That was a great job of timing his leap and knocking the ball down by McGargle. But Northwestern now is getting a field position battle that they got stomped in in the first quarter. Now they're starting to play the game in Ohio State's end. Well, they just got enough time here in the first half. If they can get on the scoreboard, we got a good ball game. DJ Sander kicking it. Greenway Patrick has to retreat. Muffs it. Loses the football. And a big scrum for it. Now it gets nasty. I'm telling all, all the people watching out there, it gets nasty down there at the bottom of that pile, even though the official calls it. See, he's tripping out of there. He better get his ankles <laughs> taped or he's going to get his rear end taken out. But it gets ugly down there at the bottom of those piles. And I think Kunle Patrick did a great job of hustling, coming up with the recovery. John Cooper will be back to talk more as Northwestern holds on to the football. They have it back at their 11. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday, brought to you by Cisco Systems. This is the power of the network. Now, and by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Northwestern has the football on its 11 down 10 nothing as um, some flags come down. We are joining the group here by John Cooper and. Uh, it's Jim Tressel now in his third season as the head coach here at Ohio State. Northwestern goes back five yards. And Coop, it's got to be kind of uh, mixed emotions for you because you recruited a lot of these guys that won the national championship last year. Well, you're exactly right. Obviously, I'm proud of those players. We did leave some good players. I think they had like eight drafted two years ago and eight last year, and they'll have eight to ten again this year. So we left some pretty good football players here. After being pushed back five yards, that's Noah Heron who gets the, uh, gets the carry for Northwestern. Coach, one of the things, uh, obviously the big question about Ohio State is uh, the loss of Maurice Perrette. How big a difference has been noticed by you as a football coach the loss of Maurice on this football team and the effect that it's had? Chris, I think it's huge. We're talking about uh, Maurice Perrette is not an ordinary running back. He's a preseason favorite to win the Heisman Trophy, the preseason offensive player of the year in the conference. A very talented football player, and I think the Buckeyes have missed him so far. Can that galvanize the team, though, bring them together? Well, no, I don't. I don't think so. I think they miss him. I think, uh, you know, if you're up there blocking, you don't know who the running back is. You could care less who it is. But Maurice made those offensive linemen look good. Let's quickly go back to the studio, Matt. All right, fam. Penn State at home with Minnesota, and the Nittany Lions back into it. The freshman Austin Scott on the option turns the corner and gets in, so they're down by 10. Michigan State up 14-0 on Iowa. Nathan Chandler gets his ninth touchdown pass of the season to just one interception. They're back in at 14-7. Iowa with a terrific defense. Trying to come back now offensively down 14-7. Third and ninth for Northwestern. They're down 10-0. 
Carpenter coming up the middle. Flags flying everywhere. Pick your hold. Yeah, they again they're having trouble handling handling the switch flips on the outside. What I call the linebacker will come inside. They took Will Smith, the defensive end. Lining him up in the outside, ran a little X game. Watch Robert Reynolds. He's going to come here. Will's going to come in and out. And what it does, those guys are just holding on for dear life. That's something that they have to do. And AJ's got to watch himself right there. That's a way to pull off, AJ. Don't give him a cheap shot. Got to be tempting, though, sometimes, huh? Well, you want to get your shots in on quarterbacks when you can. But, they, you know, nowadays they got skirts on these guys. Not, yes, that, I that mean, was, in, that a, was, in a good way. That in wasn't a very good like series by Northwestern. No, 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 that wasn't a very good series. Coach. They're going backwards, and they only used up about 20 seconds off the clock. Now, Ohio State's going to get the ball with four minutes left and all, and all their timeouts. So, a good opportunity to, to put this team away before halftime. The penalties have hurt Northwestern. They shoot their good field position. Boy, Huffman almost got his third punt blocked of the season. Gamble lets it trickle in front of him and then tries to pick it up at the 32. Would you rather not touch it at all there, Coach? I'd get away from that one. That, I think that's too dangerous. So Ohio State does have indeed all of its timeouts. 3.48 to go as they try to build on a 10-0 lead. Charlie, the bell tower on the campus of Ohio State University. The Buckeyes with a 10-0 lead and the football on their own 32-yard line. Still joined by John Cooper, the former head coach here at Ohio State. Still lives here in Columbus. It's all that's... Uh, not much on that carry. Lydell Ross has got to read the back, the, the block of the pulling guard. The pulling guard goes outside. The inside's clogged up. Get, get on the rear end of that pulling guard. He's 340 pounds. Chris, that follow play, him. That play we saw there, Ohio State, that is their bread and butter play. They ran that play last year 36 times against Texas Tech. They're going to double down and run off tackle. That's uh, Jim Trussell's, that's his favorite play. Power O. It's kind of similar to the old counter OT of the old Washington Redskins. Just different people blocking different guys. Similar type action. Second and nine. McMullen flinging it in the air for the first down. Coach, I know what uh, the, the release of Scott McMullen. Quick, is it not? It, it's very quick. I think that's the best thing he does. And I heard you talk about him earlier calling gunslinger. The one thing he can do if he has time is throw the football. That was complete to Michael Jenkins, but a penalty is going to bring it back. It seems both offensive lines are getting confused. They're not. They're both playing defensive line. Ten yard penalty. Your hands inside. Second down. Got more football coming your way tonight at 7:45 Eastern on ESPN. Lou Holtz in South Carolina go to Knoxville try to upset number eight Tennessee, and at nine Eastern on ESPN two, number seven LSU looks to keep its championship hopes alive as they take on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. South Carolina, Tennessee also available on ESPN HD. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. After that holding call, it is now second and 19. McMullen gets it off just in the nick of time. And that is completed to Lydell Ross for the big game as we take you back to Matt Weiner. All right, fam, UConn and Virginia Tech, 10-0 game. The Hokies had an interception in 12 straight games coming into this one. Make it 13. That's Eric Green stepping in front of the Dan Orlovsky pass, and he's going to go all the way back untouched, 84 yards. Tech up 17-0. Had a chance to do a game over Virginia Tech earlier in the year, fam. That's one of the top football teams I've seen so far this year. They're certainly a top five team in my opinion. Boy, that's a tough place, isn't it? Blacksburg, tough place for teams to go in and play. Third and four, Jenkins gets it, and that should be good enough for another Ohio State first down. That's a good veteran play by Michael Jenkins. He's running a little hitch on the outside, and he takes the route to the sticks, and maybe past the sticks, because he knows in those type of throws, he might have to come back for the football so he has room for air as far as yardage gain. It's a good pass by Scott, throwing it low and outside. And that's a way to go down there and use your hands, Michael. Good job for young receiver. So he cut the ball with his hands and not his shoulder pads. Hands first. Jenkins' third catch. It's now first down from the 43. There's Mullen. Can keep it? Nope. Flicks it over the middle, and that is picked off. Looking for Hartsock. Looks like McGargle 
was able to get it. Chris, but, that's a point you made early in yeah. the ball game. You do not spread out and throw the ball back inside. You do that usually if, you, uh, if the, uh, the defense is going to come up with a big play. Yeah, I'm glad somebody's listening to me, Coach. I'm glad you heard that. <laughs> Check that. 21, Brian Hines coming up with the interception on the tip pass. We'll see if Northwestern can get on the board before the half's over. Brian Hines coming up with a pick, his first career interception for the freshman from Lone Tree, Colorado, Northwestern. Trying to get on the board. Terrell Jordan has the football. See you, Mark. And let's send it back to Matt Weiner. He'll tell us what we're going to see at halftime, Matt. All right, fam. It was all the makings of an ambush in East Lansing, Michigan, and that's where Iowa is today. We'll tell you about their slow start and get you around the Big Ten. Take a closer look at sensational sophomore receiver Larry Fitzgerald of Pittsburgh and his NFL influences, plus Florida in danger of falling under 500 for the first time in 11 years. All coming up at half. All right, Matt. And before the half hits, let's see if Northwestern can do some things on offense. Kunle Patrick can't bring in that pass. That's what he's got to bring in. I mean, Northwestern needs to get some type of points on the board just to give them some confidence. They've had opportunities. He's not jumped up and took advantage of them, Coach. Well, I'm a little surprised. They look like they there's a little bit of sense of urgency. You, you know, you're, 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 you haven't gone, you haven't scored yet. It's 10 to nothing. You got to do something to get on the score scoreboard. They're letting the clock run down. We only have 53 seconds left to go in the first half. And they still do have their full complement of timeouts, all three of them. And Brett Bazinet completing half of his pass. They need to get things happening on first and second down to give themselves manageable third down situations. Let's come in again and Bazinet. Incomplete Sally with the big hit. Don't be surprised if you see a little slant and go off that because Nate Sally has been breaking up on the football in a great way. You'll see Nate Sally come and break. Now, oftentimes you'll see is that receiver will run the slant and he'll take off on a go route just because you know that you have the safety that's hungry and is getting a good read on the football. See if you can get him. See if you can get him biting. Chris, this Ohio State defense, as you mentioned earlier, this is one of the best defenses I've seen this year. They can all run, and they're very, very extremely well coached. Mark D'Antonio does a great job as a defensive coordinator. Brian Huffman in for his fourth punt of the half. And that dies down around the 12-yard line. What do you do as a coach now? You got 40 seconds. You're up 10 nothing. You, you uh, go ahead and see what you got. You no, you run the clock. Run the clock out. Get, get out of here with a 10 nothing lead. A little surprised Chris Campbell didn't didn't feel that one. As, as good athlete as he is, you know he might have a chance to break that thing. But now that you've let the ball bounce, I don't think there's any question. I would I would get out of here. They'll run a draw play on first down if they have any success, then they might throw it down the field. But you know, I'd be surprised if they take any chances here. Get your opinion on this. I don't like the rule of it. stand at 10 yard if it's over your head let it go. I say catch the ball because punters are after dropping them in there and they kind of get good backspin on it. Catch the ball and do something. Chris, that's okay if you catch it, but you don't want to bobble it inside the pin. <laughs> well, that's what you're back for there, catch it. And they do hand it off. There's a nice chunk of uh, real estate for Maurice Hall. There's that power O play coach you were talking about earlier and you mentioned. A little bit different, though, with Maurice Hall and Lido Ross running as opposed to when Claret ran about 36 times. That's, the, Texas Tech that's exactly right. The Maurice may break a couple of those a game. They're going to let the clock run out now. That's it. going to be the end of the first half, I believe. Hey, John Cooper, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I'd like to see you back on the sideline sometime well, one day, thank, huh? Thank you very much. Let me say this. If I'm not if I'm not at a game, I'm watching you guys. <laughs> you do a good job. You and Chris do a good job, and I enjoy watching you on the SPU. All right, thanks, thanks, Coach. Pleasure seeing you again. John yeah. Cooper, who recruited many of these athletes that Coach Trussell sent to the national championship last year. Ohio State up 10-0 at the half. Let's join Matt Weiner for the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. All right, Pat, thanks very much. Ohio State's 23-game win streak over Northwestern is the longest in the Big Ten for any opponents. And right now, leading at the half, but Northwestern, there's some fight in them, and these Buckeyes, they tend to make things close down the stretch, as you know. Welcome into the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. Lots of goings-on around the Big Ten. Iowa in some trouble on the road in East Lansing. Minnesota on the road as well. I'll tell you how the Hawkeyes are faring against the Spartans with Fred Russell. Plus, get you updated on the Golden Gophers. It's all coming up there. Well, welcome back to Ohio State. Northwestern about to kick off as we start off the second half. Ohio State got a Lido Ross 12-yard touchdown run and Mike Nugent 32-yard field goal, and they lead this game 10 to nothing. Chris Gamble gets it over the shoulder and decides to take a knee, so 
Ohio State will take over from the 20. So it's only 10 nothing after a one half of play. Pam Moore joined by uh, Chris Gilman, the former All-American linebacker here at Ohio State. And uh, boy, Chris, you look at the numbers in the first half, and Northwestern had 65 rushing yards. Ohio State had not given up more than 40 in a game this year. Yeah, and, and they were able to move the ball a little bit on the ground with the mix-up with Jason Wright and Noah Heron. But the thing that's killed Northwestern is they had the chance to put the ball in the end zone, get points on the board when they were in the red zone. They came away empty, plus penalties have killed their offense. And any momentum that they had been knocked back by penalties. In fact, they had a 51-yard drive in the second quarter. They ate up nine minutes of time, and they missed a field goal. As McMullen carries, John Pickens makes the stop. He picks up nine yards. And McMullen starting for the second straight game for Craig Krenzel, who remains out with the uh, hurt elbow. There you see McMullen's numbers. Brett Bazinet for Northwestern. And uh, Jason Wright, very talented running back. And the total yards, Ohio State just a little bit more than Northwestern, but that's kind of been their M.O. this year, Chris. They're 4-0, but statistically they're close with most of the teams they play. Yeah, they do what they have to do to win ball games. It's not always pretty, and there's Craig Krenzel. Now, Craig is a little bit more of a running threat than Scott, as evidenced that last place. <laughs> Scott looked a little uncomfortable scrambling. This guy does better with the ball. Lionel Ross picking up the first down and a little bit more, giving him seven yards out to the 36-yard line. Ross in the first half, six carries for 34 yards and a 12-yard touchdown run. See Lydell right here being patient and makes a nice cut there. And there's a good job by the ceiling of the defensive line by the Ohio State's offensive line, and Lydell's hitting it up in there hard. Northwestern has to be stout in this first series. Again, it's important for Northwestern to start fast, just main tight in this ball game because of Ohio State's lack of able to finish the ball game, as evidenced in the past four games at this play. Yeah, the 10-point lead really is nothing for Ohio State. They've been blowing bigger ones than that as Ross gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Luis Castillo making the stop. He loses a yard. And this Northwestern football team coming in on the year two and two. They had a big win last week against Duke. They had six quarterback sacks. They had six quarterback sacks all of last season. And the thing about Northwestern, what I'm very impressed with and is their ability to handle the run. They've done a good job of stopping or controlling the run game of Ohio State, and that's much improved over last year. As you mentioned in the first half, Tim, they've given up over 313 yards per game. Last year, this year, they've cut that in half. And for them to win ball games, they've got to stop the run. All the time for McMullen, and he completes it out to his tight end, Ben Hartsock. Slips a tackle, and is stopped about a yard short of the first down. Yeah, Ben Hartsock is a guy that you want to get the football to. Why? Because he's a big, strong kid that runs people over. Right there, Joe Pickens had him in his sight, and Joe could have dropped him for a five-yard game, but Ben was able to break through the tackle and get positive yards. Right here, Joe's got to bring his feet and wrap his arms. <laughs> Don't go down. Keep your feet driving. Bring your feet. They're your friend. Hartsock got his second catch of the day. He had a 17-yard catch back in the first half. Third and one now for the Buckeyes. In their first possession of the second half. And on third and one, they throw for it. McMullen gets Hartsock. First down into Northwestern territory. Again, what Scott McMullen's been doing, not only in the first half, but to start this second half, is he's going to spread the wealth, too. Brett Basney of Northwestern does a good job of spreading the football around. Harry's going to run a little option read route to Ben Hartsock. Ben's going to sit down in between the linebackers to make sure he gets the first down and secure the football. He does a nice job of looking off, and he finds his open receiver, Ben Hartsock, right in the middle of the linebackers and securing the football after you catch. And first down, McMullen in the air again, wide open. That is Michael Jenkins for another Ohio State first down. And they're starting the second half off the way they started the game with a good opening drive. Well, here's a 6'5 receiver working against the 5'9 corner, and the 5'9 corner is playing soft because of the height advantage. Right here's Jeff Backus, here's Michael Jenkins. Now, what they're going to do is Michael's going to push him up the field and curl it, forcing Jeff to get in a turn position. He just curls inside and turns and runs up the field once he catches the ball. Jeff has got to get a little bit better break, a little bit quicker break on the ball and get there when the ball gets there. And if you don't, make sure you make the tackle. It's a good route, and that's a threat that Michael Jenkins has being 6'5", five can run a 4-3. In fact, with that catch, is now fourth all-time in Ohio State's catches list. Going for it all, and that is Drew Carter. And they're saying he was not able to bring it down. And, you know, 
I'll tell you, that's a great throw, and I like Jim Bowman, the offensive coordinator. He's coming up and loosening up. Then, boys, we got a good arm quarterback back there. He's the gunslinger. That's his nickname. Let him throw the ball downfield. I talked about Jenkins running 4 3. Well, Drew Carter can do him one better because he's coming about a 4 2 down your throat. And it's a deep post. You see Drew Carter right there has the ball, but the, the ball does touch the ground. That is an excellent call by the officials. Right there, it's the ball on the ground. No catch. Good try by Drew. Great throw. Good try. Just not enough. That call by this Big Ten officiating crew. So it's now second and ten. And they go on the ground to Hall. And he gets it down around the 26-yard line, about a 35 coming up. Again, you see the split time between Lionel Ross and Maurice Hall. And Coach Trestle will go with the other one has the hot hand. He doesn't play favorites with those two. Whoever has the hot hand, he's the guy that's going to get the bulk of the carries. And in the first half, Chris, both of those guys got six carries apiece. Ross, though, got 34 yards. Hall only 11. And there's that combination. Last week, it was golden against Bo uh, Bowling Green. Well, okay, it's a little bit better front than Bowling Green. This is a big third down for Northwestern defense. They've got to come up with some type of stop. Five for eight, converting third down so far today. The rushing three. That is complete. Question is, will he have enough for the first down? And on second effort, Carter gets it. Dragging the defender with him. That's a great job of second effort by Drew Carter. When you have an empty backfield set like Ohio State had, you know as a defense that the ball has to come out quick. Scott's going to get it set and throw. Here's Drew Carter, does a good job of turning it up inside. And that's a nice play of Northwestern running. But Drew Carter is a strong guy, and he's running through people pushing the pile. You've got to be a purple helmet. You can't be standing back here. You've got to be running and driving him back. You can't stand around and watch your buddies get carried. And he carries him into that first down. Ball. Lost a yard or two on that play as Pat Durr and Luis Castillo come up to make the stop. And Durr is the linebacker who last year He's back now on a medical redshirt as a senior, tore every ligament in one of his knees six plays into the season. Yeah, he's a tough kid, and I talked to him yesterday, and he struggled the first three games. He said last week against Duke, he felt his best. He made a great play there. He beat Bryce Bishop in pulling guard, beat him inside, did not give up one for one, defeated the blocker, and made the tackle. That is solid middle linebacker play. And he still tries to get back to his, uh, his form from before that uh, major injury. Drive already covering 61 yards, and that one is almost intercepted like Marvin Ward was in on the coverage. Ward's been very active today. That's a great read by Marvin Ward, and that's a poor job by Scott McMullen, staring his receiver down. Did not bother looking anybody off. He's looking right at the guy he's going to throw to, and if you have a player like Marvin Ward who knows what's going on in the football field, he will make a great break on the football and almost picked it off. Scott's lucky that one isn't going the other way. Already had an interception earlier this year, a 22-yard return against Kansas Fifth Ward. Now on third and 12 for the Buckeyes. Three receivers to McMullen's left, two to his right, and he keeps it. And McMullen picks up the first down. How about that call, Chris? What's well, a smart call? And plays don't work, and you don't have the ability for big plays if receivers don't block down the field. There's a reason why Michael Jenkins right there, blocking downfield, allows McMullen the screen to go ahead and get to the outside and get the first down. That's a great job, because Northwestern's looking at Scott McMullen saying, wait, he's not supposed to run the ball like Craig Krenzel. Right there, he did run the ball like Craig Krenzel. Gets the first down. In fact, his 15-yard run, Chris, is a career high yeah, for McMullen. Yeah, Michael Jenkins was the one that gave him the block to spring him, too. It's a good job being a good team player, Michael. Block downfield. Three guys in the backfield, a couple of fullbacks. This is Woody Hayes now. This is straight Woody Hayes. And Ross, going up the middle, is stacked up about a yard or two short of that goal line. This is the old T formation now. This is Woody Hayes. This was the goal line formation of uh, Woody Hayes. And Jim Truss was a great admirer of Woody Hayes. And this is all you used to see when, when Woody was the coach here. Three backs right here. Right there, see, that's your T. Not a very good T, but it is a T. <laughs> and right there, you have a double ISO block 
Guys didn't miss. They're, they're in there blocking air, though. You got to block somebody because Lido got stood up in the hole. And Lido, you have to get down low if you're going to run in there because Northwestern has some tough kids. They'll knock you back. And a timeout has been taken by Ohio State as a Ross limps off the field, shaking up a little bit on that play. We'll be back. Ohio State up 10. Back in Columbus, where Ohio State has called the timeout. Now second down. Well, they abandoned the Woody formation. Use that team for one play. <laughs> Ross got hurt. That is Brandon Joe. And the fullback gets close to the goal line, but not quite in. Well, you have to win the pad level. And that time Northwestern won the pad level. That was a nice job in there by Louis Castillo getting penetration. And not just only getting lower than the guys. You see him in there fighting and groundhogging and rooting it out like a termite and making a play. That's a good job. Luis, when he get low and not give up and reach and dive and scratch and fall and do everything you have to do to make a play. That's great defense line play. Castillo, the junior from Garfield, New Jersey, making his 12th great start today. Drew Carter split wide left for the Buckeyes on third down. And McMullen going into the end zone, and he's got the touchdown, Ryan Hamby. A little play action fake, and, and you know you know that going in because you, you watch the film. In preparation, you watch the film to see what a defense likes to play down there on the goal line. They play man-to-man. -man. Watch Ryan Hamby. He's going to kind of sneak in here, then get across the field. Here's the play action fake. He sneaks across the field. He loses his man. It's off to the race. You cannot give a tight end a free release inside on the goal line. You have to force him to go outside. It's too easy. Made it look easy. Hamby's second touchdown catch of the season as Mike Nugent comes in to punch through the extra point. See right here now, Dominic Price has to have help covering him. He's on an outside technique. Ryan runs free the inside. It's pitch and catch. It's pitch and catch. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by DirecTV. Movies, music, and exclusive sports from the leader in digital satellite entertainment. And by ESPN Video Games. Ohio State got the football to start off the second half. Kept it for 6 minutes and 29 seconds. Culminating in an 80-yard drive with a Scott McMullen to Ryan Hanty touchdown pass. Therefore, it is 17 at that. And that's what Northwestern, they need to come out and start fast defensively. They didn't have the opportunity to do that. Jason Wright can't hang on to it. He took a knee. And the official is going to down him. Well, that official's got to help Jason Wright out there. He's got to blow the whistle. There's got to be a flag for a late hit. If he's going to call the ball down on the half-yard line, he's got to blow that whistle and stop guys from coming in and taking their shot. I don't blame the Ohio State guys, but he's got to protect that player. If he's down... Let him know he's down. It's still kicked. Then the receiver took a knee. By rule, touchback. Well, First yeah, it, it is a good call by rule, but you know what? He's got to blow his whistle. Watch this, Jason Wright. See, he could take a knee in the end zone because the ball's still in the end zone. He takes his knee. Now, this guy, he's winding his arm. He doesn't know what to call. Now, make a decision. You're like a coach. you got to make a decision. You're going to get those guys killed. He's winding his arm. Yeah, winding his arm, so he's saying that it's a fair That's... game. See if you can hear the whistle. I hear no whistle. He's nodding his head to go. Then he takes a shot. Then he blows the whistle. you got to protect those players. Well, Jason Wright lucky to get out of that, and that was the correct call. The ball did not come out of the end zone, as Chris said. And now the quarterback change, Alexander Webb starting in place of Brett Bazinet here in the second half as we send you to Matt Weiner. Fan number 23 in Missouri looking to go 5-0 for the first time since 1981, but they're going to have to stop somebody. Clark Green for the touchdown here, and the rivals Kansas up 13-7 now at halftime. All right, Matt, that's always a great basketball matchup, and Alexander Webb plays one play and uh, here comes Brett Bazinet back in. Second and four. And there's just a pile of red shirts around Jason Wright. 
Marcus Green is in there leading the play. Now, Marcus Green's a kid that lost a lot of weight. Again, it's penetration, playing defense. If you can penetrate against an offensive line, you got them beat. That's kind of Northwestern's version of the zone running play where Jason can have his options to go from inside to outside. But there's nowhere to go. He's just got to pound it up in there. But the play will be stopped if you knock the offensive lineman back or you get penetration. Rush defense has already given up a season high today, but Jason White struggling in the first half only got 23 yards on 10 carries. And now third and four for the Wildcats. And right again, picks up the first down. And Wright is tackled down around the 47-yard line. Tyler Everett and Nate Sally there. Well, you know what they did? They caught him in a man-to-man -man blitz, and it was a great call by Randy Walker and good vision by Jason Wright. Understanding that the weakness of the defense is going to be outside. There's a pulling guard. You got a lead blocker. You'll see right here Parker blocking on Gamble. And Jason Wright knows what to do with the football when he gets in the open field. 20 yard gain. That is the best offensive play, the longest offensive play of the game for Northwestern. They have the ability to move the ball now. Holding on to it is Bazinet. And Bazinet picks up another Northwestern first down. Back-to-back -back first downs. A.J. Hawk making the stop. We had a chance to talk with A.J. Hawk yesterday about playing linebacker at Ohio State. Interesting thing to say. But I'll tell you, Northwestern's going back to basics. Now, that's, that's schoolyard ball. You snap it back to the guy and let him run. That, that's, that, that's what that play's called. Snap it to him and you run. There's no, like, XOZ575 check down X. It's snap it and run. Very simple. Hawk right now has 11 tackles. As they again snap it and run. Yeah. <laughs> but this time, Nate Sally got him early. Well, a lot of teams, Northwestern is a team that likes to re repeat plays like Ohio State. And what they'll do is they'll run the same play until you get it fixed. And I've been impressed with Nate Sally. He's able to provide great run support. He becomes like an extra linebacker from his safety position without getting out of position to cover the pass. But snap it and run. Why not, Randy? Well, he picked up two yards that time before Sally. But officially won on second and nine. Bazinet to right. And right gets it down to the 35-yard line. Hawk, tackle number 12. Now, AJ's an active player. The thing about that, though, what I, 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 is he's starting to make some tackles five, after five-yard games. You want to make your tackles as linebacker at the furthest at three yards. You want to be at the hit point at three yards. Northwestern is doing a great job of moving and creating space for their running backs to hit. So it's third and four now for Northwestern. Manageable third down, which they haven't been in many of these today. And now Bazinet is split wide to the left and a direct snap to right. That, that makes sense. You, if you're going to run, snap and run, snap it to your running back and run it. Snap it to your best runner. Yeah, there you go. He did. Close. Then we ran Bazinet in motion. And all it is, is it ends up being like a, a toss iso, is what it's called. And it's a zone running play where he has his choice of holes. Why not give it to your best guy to have him have the option to hit it inside or outside? Right so close to the first down marker that they will measure. Hey, what was the offensive play called? ZX over 525? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's those offensive guys that get too technical. A lot different than snap it and run. Did it work? No, there are a couple of chain length short. What do you got here, Chris? Your fourth and short. Got to go? I got to go. Yeah, but you don't have it. You have a field goal kicker over three on the whole year. You're down 17 nothing. You're in hostile territory. You want to make it a game. This is the ball game. In my opinion, the turning points in games, major points in games, big plays in games, right here it is. Now, if you're Ohio State, you play for the sneak. You send those big hogs up front. You, if you're a linebacker, you go over the top and try to time the quarterback sneak. They have Mike DeAndre in there. He's about 6'4", playing middle linebacker. And Bazinet does hold on to it. Hawk grabs him from behind. And Robert Reynolds with the initial contact. And I think they got the initial surge. That was a good job by their offensive line of getting a good push, just enough to get first down yardage. See our yellow stripe there. We're going to have to measure it. See if they got the favorable spot. It looked to me like they had a good enough surge to get the first down. Randy Walker and this offensive line coming in, uh, shaking things up a little bit today. 
starting a freshman, Trevor Reese at center. Little Matt Allrich should guard. Maybe their best offensive lineman. Big play for Northwestern. And they got that first down on the fourth down try. Coming up at 3.30 Eastern time this afternoon, join ABC Sports, a great day of regional college football, highlighted by Pittsburgh and Texas A&M. That's the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. Others of you will see Notre Dame Purdue, Wake Forest at Virginia, Matt Shaw is supposed to be back, and Washington State taking on Oregon. Check local listings for the game in your area. So Noah Heron gets the football on first down, and he goes backwards. It's going to be interesting to see. I want to talk about that Notre Dame new game for a second. Notre Dame might be starting the freshman quarterback Brady Quinn right here from Columbus, Ohio. There's a lot of a uh, lot of heat on a uh, Carlisle Holiday. He's sort of a fish out of water, though, don't you think, Chris? He's more of an option quarterback. Yeah. Try to fit him in that West Coast offense. It's not working. That's the break. So when you get it, you get a coach. It's a West Coast style coach. He's going to want to throw the football. Maybe Carlisle might be out of the building. But something different Ohio State's doing right here is Tim Anderson. He's normally a defensive tackle. He's playing a lot of defensive end today. Bazinet holds on to it. He gets some bruises as he gets down to the 30-yard line. Hawk and Reynolds making the stop. Again, that's a counterplay for a quarterback. That's something that you don't see, and it's it's the, the creative mind of Randy Walker that he knows the kind of athlete Bazinet is. He's going to get him put him in positions to succeed. They'll run a quarterback counter. They need to come up with some points down here in the red zone to get back into this football game. And there's another big third down, third and nine. Three receivers in, that's Patrick in motion. Bazinet gets rid of it, oh, oh, dangerous pass, Chris Gamble. Boy, got a thing one, if he catches that, it's six the other way. You know, we have a great view up here in the press box. Chris Gamble got a great jump on the ball because Bazinet staring down Kunle Patrick the whole way. And he's lucky, Bazinet is, that Gamble did not take it the distance. Watch him clear, clear, run a little outside. Chris Gamble, watch his break. Look at that break on the football. That's first round break right there. And he should have had two hands on that. He's going the distance. He is going the distance. He put two hands up. I don't understand, guys, with this one hand thing, man. Two hands on the ball. Gamble has no interceptions so far. This 47-yard field goal attempt for Slade Larshad, who's already missed from 35. And that one has no chance. Yeah, you got to go for it. There's no shot. You have no shot at kicking a field goal because the center can't get the ball back to your holder for one. And, and poor Slade is a young kid. He's just, he's hooking up. And Sean Mansfield, the long snapper, not so good. And it's still a shutout. Northwestern continues to move the ball pretty well on Ohio State, but once again coming up empty, Slade Larshide missing a 47-yard field goal. They are 0 for 4 on field goal tries this season. That one really wasn't on Slade. That was a poor snap. As we send you back now, oh, we're going to go in that line in a second, but first we'll check out this flag. And again, Northwestern's in position to put points on the board. They come up empty-handed. And penalties. Yep, face mask against Northwestern. Here's Matt Weiner. Go, Matt. I never went anywhere, fam. You know, Connecticut, they may be pretty happy about not having to face Virginia Tech when they join the Big East next season. That's Mike Imo opening kickoff of the second half. He'll go all the way, and the Hokies up 34-0. First half. Bot Tech is making a statement. You certainly are. Brian Randall, the quarterback. A lot of people in Connecticut excited about that game. But uh, boy, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother league when you're taking on people like Virginia Tech down in their building as uh, Connecticut will join the Big East full time as a full fledged member next season. Second and one, Ira Guilford got the uh, last carry in the face mask now. Northwestern's fifth man of the game. Well, up the middle, that's Brandon Joe, the fullback. Let's take a look at the last drive, the first drive of the half for. Ohio State, Scott McMullen getting it going with Craig Hartsock. Well, what I like that Scott did here, you know, here you see it running, it was sprung by the block by Michael Jenkins. But he spread the football around, and the more you throw to your tight ends, Cam, the more you throw to the backs, the more that opens up the, the field for the wide receivers to work, and the more you can hit them with passes down the field. You just got to be patient and hit the open guy. He set that up nicely with the play action, one-yard touchdown pass to Ryan Hamby. And now McMullen. 
gets it out to Hartsock again. And the big tight end bullies his way to a first down. It's a nice job of Ben Hartsock selling the block on the bootleg and sneaking out to the flat right here is Ben. Now watch here, he's going to sell it right here. Watch him sell the block, see how block, hold, hold, release. Now put your shoulder down, big man, knock some people over. Nice hit, though, by the Northwestern defense. Three guys under the tackle. Good pursuit. Hartsock at 6'4", 265. He has four catches today. He only had nine in the first four games of the season. And once again, Ohio State into Northwestern territory. Guilford. Ball down. Maybe a yard or two game for him. Well, interesting about Ira Guilford now. He's a true freshman. Came in as a defensive back. Then, of course, when the Maurice Claret situation hit, they were lacking the third tailback, so Ira Guilford, who was a really good, solid tailback in high school, was moved back to the offense. First action of the year, I believe, for Ira. Yeah, no, uh, no carries coming in. Guilford, a freshman from Hoboken, New Jersey. Second and nine. McMullen with the pitch. Lord Guilford. As Marvin Ward meets him out of bounds. And this is where Ohio State likes to do when they get an opponent, the old Ohio State. Not a, so far this year, but they're starting to pound you now. And they'll just keep pounding. You'll run a toss, they'll run a power roll, they'll run a lead draw, and they'll hit you with the play action. That's their MO. It's been Jim Trestle's MO since his four national championships in Youngstown. Randy Walker knows that. So if you're Northwestern, you really got to stop. Get your defense to stout up and buck up and cowboy up, all three of them. Stop the run. <laughs> Guilford Chris actually coming in, had played in one game and had five carries for only two yards. So he's uh, certainly building on that in his second game of the season in which he's carried the ball. Seven for 11 on third down. Can you make it eight for 12 as Michael Jenkins catches it inbounds. Dominic Price with the stop. A great break by Dominic Price to tackle. Let's take a look, Chris, at our athletic trivia question. Since 1995, which three Big Ten teams have won or tied for the most conference championships take it over and we'll have the uh, the answer coming up I'm betting a thousand percent on the Aflac trivia question <laughs> by the way got to toughen them up for you yep. they're gonna say that was not in fact about a yard short of the first down so on fourth and one Ohio State's gonna try to hold on to the ball right. we have two fullbacks in the backfield Brandon Schnicker and Brandon Joe the fullback who lined up a tailback right there for four on the season on fourth down conversions. Which brand do you go to? Joe. Yeah, and, and, and doom from the start. No pad level, not knocking people off. Great job by Northwestern of stuffing the Iowa State offensive line and standing up and making a play on fourth down. And not even close. Great job, Northwestern defensive rising to the challenge. I don't know what they're looking around for. They're not even close. Yeah, I see the uh, Ohio State defensive guys are all ready to go on the field. That's usually a pretty good yeah. sign because they know. Yep, and they're and here they come. And so power O, here comes Adrian Clark, lead block. They get stood up in the hole, knocking Brandon Joe back. Then you got the purple gang of helmets coming and making gang tackle right here. There's the Adrian Clark and Schnicker. Two guys get stood up in the hole. No room for Brandon Joe to go. Now remember, he's not a tailback. So he doesn't have the great vision that tailbacks do to find an open space. But if you don't get penetration, or and, and if you don't knock people off the line of scrimmage, you have no chance anyway. Great job by Northwestern, standing up and making a play on fourth down. And Joe has been hurt early in the year. In fact, it's the first time he's carried the football this season in this game. Alexander Webb back in a quarterback, Chris. Well, it could be snap and run. Yep, snap and run. Snap, run, and go down. Tim Anderson gets him almost immediately. Well, you know, I'm not a genius, but I know that if Alexander Webb's in there, it's a pretty good shot, snap and run, and so do the Buckeye defense are not honor any contain. Just running the ball. All right, smarty pants. All right, here we go. You think you're 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 doing well, right? It's 95. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're gonna ask me before the Which answer? Three Big Ten teams have won or tied for the most conference championships. I'd have to say uh, Ohio State, Michigan, and Northwestern. There you go. The first Michigan and Ohio State kind of obvious, but yes, Northwestern winning in '96. Uh, excuse me, 95, 96, and 2000. And that one, Gamble, going over the top of Kunle Patrick. Yeah, Bazinet has got to look to his deep route because he had Akins running down the sideline all along because Chris Gamble says, I, 
I was a Heisman candidate coming in this season. I need to make a big play happen. Right here is Chris Gamble on your screen. Now watch the break he gets on Kunle Patrick. Right there. But look at this guy. Oh, man, hold on to it. Chris is breaking before that ball is thrown. He's got Akins running down the sidelines if Bazne can hold on. That's, that's Gamble's third pass breakup of the day. So now third and ten as we're inside a minute in the third quarter. Bazinet up top, and it is complete, but short of the first down. Ashton Akins makes the catch. Will Allen is there on the coverage. Nice job of Bazinet recognizing the zone blitz, and you give yourself a manageable fourth down. You, you got to go for it. I mean, you have to get something going. It's not a team that's going to drive the ball 80 yards. You're in some type of field position. Why not go for it? You have nothing to lose. You're two and two. You're in the Buckeye Stadium defending national champions. Take your shots. And it looks like they will let the clock run down and start the fourth quarter out with a fourth and one. And Ohio State scores on its first possession of this second half. And they now lead 17 to nothing as we head towards the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, first play. Fourth and one for Northwestern, going for it down 17-0. And in the throw, Bazinet gets it knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Simon Frazier got a hand up. Well, they had a nice little play out in the flat. They had a, a down pick by the three outside receivers with Jason Wright sneaking out to the flat. But they forgot to contend with 6-6 six, six, Simon Frazier coming off the corner. And you have to cut his knee. See, that'll get his hands down fast. If you don't cut his knees, he has no chance. You'll see Simon Frazier right here. Look, 6'6", six, six, pushes the tight end off. You got to cut his knees to get his hands down. Interesting. That, that way to play defense. You're making my offense look good. Keep doing what you do. But they had a play. They had a play because Jason Wright was running free in the flat. And Western turns it back over again. Frazier is from uh, Upper Arlington High School. Same high school as Jeff Backus. Plays for uh, Western. Upper Arlington just minutes away from the stadium. Yeah, actually my town I live in and, and state champions together. High school state champions, yeah, Jeff Backus. Yep. They uh, talk often to uh, Frazier and Backus. And there's Jeff Backus again, a guy, just a real talent on offense, Chris. We saw him last year as both a, a running back. They switched him to wide receiver because of the, uh, they, they have so much talent back yep. there with Jason Wright. And this year he's a defensive back. Well, he's a non-selfish kid and he's a great athlete and a great player. And he's still learning how to play corners. He's going to be a fine corner. He's still learning the position. He's played well today. Coach to say if he makes a mistake once, he doesn't repeat it. Just a good football player. And that one is short hopped, incomplete to Drew Carter. Well, he's got his on the coverage. Jeff was a running back in high school. Take a look. I think I was at that game, actually. The state championship game, he has great speed, he has vision. He's just a fine football player. Anybody that can play wide receiver, corner, and running back, you're a good athlete. In fact, he was Mr. Football in 2000 when his, uh, he had the Ohio high school record at the time, over 3,300 rushing yards and 44 touchdowns, as you see. And now trying as a defensive back. Going at Western since he had, and he actually was offered a scholarship by Ohio State. They wanted to make him a defensive back. He says he has no regrets, Chris. He's glad he went to Northwestern. Northwestern's a good place for Jeff. He's done a good job. Virginia also recruited him. Smart kid. His bat is dropped by Troy Smith. One of the uh, backup quarterbacks. Yeah, Jeff Backus. See, we, just, we, we put him on the highlight package. He comes up and makes a play. Troy Smith is actually the fourth quarterback. He'll be battling for the position with Justin Zwick next, next year. But Jeff Backus has a great jump on this football, and I like the hit, because you can hear it. Now he's going to come up and bam! He brings his feet. He sees what he hit. It almost causes a big turnover. In fact, it might have been too good of a hit and too quick of a break, because the fumble didn't allow Troy, or it wasn't a fumble, because Troy didn't, wasn't able to catch the ball. But a good break and a good hit. That's why he's on defense. Right, Backus playing like a defensive guy with that hit. And Sanders' third punt is away. Bearcats signal. Patrick backs away from it, and boy, Northwestern backed up. That's why I like catching the ball. The rule should be, the unwritten rule should be catch the ball. If it's from the 10-yard line to the 5-yard line, catch the ball. We talked about Jeff Back as a good defensive player for Northwestern. A.J. Hawk, the uh, linebacker, talked to the former linebacker about being a linebacker here. 
What's the coolest thing about being a Buckeye linebacker? Um, it's tough. I mean, I don't have too much experience of being a linebacker. I've only been here about a year and a half, but probably uh, probably just being able to play in the same place that, that so many great players have been. You know, I mean, we got look at that. We got poster in the locker room that way in the All Century team and whatever. There's so many great players here. Just to know that I'm. I'm a little part of something here, and I like that. It's so much tradition over there. Well, I mean, you talk about Randy Gratishar and Tom Kuzmo and Marcus Merrick and Glenn Cobb and Thomas Pepper Johnson. I mean, the list goes on and on. And yeah, it's Steve a... Tovar. He's yeah, big Steve. Steve. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Does so, he give you any tips? Yeah, he, he actually helps a lot. You know, anyone with that kind of experience yeah. you know, can do whatever they want. You know, you, you know my tip? That's the tip I give every linebacker. Don't make it hard to see ball get ball, man. Exactly. Go get him. He does. He sees the ball and he gets the ball. He's, he, he's coachable. We have him right now with 14 tackles today, leading the team in tackles and adding on to it. Second down for Northwestern. Mark Fillmore with a short game. And uh, he is from uh, a town in which one of our co workers at ESPN is from. So who's bigger in, in Centerville, uh, A.J. Hawk or Kirk Herbstreet? Oh, uh, Herbstreet's got <laughs> He's huge, you know, everyone, all the, all the girls like Herbstreet, everyone does. So. Well, we're two linebackers, I think. Yeah, we're not going to win any beauty contests, exactly. I know that. That's the truth. He's a TV guy, but he's you are too, wow. so he, I, I don't claim to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to A.J. He, said, he remembers you as a Lions linebacker. These guys are too young to yeah. remember you here. It's kind of scary. And Jeff Backus also was talking about that. I think he was born in 1982. Yeah, I know. That, that is scary. Prior to the snap. Again, with the threat of the blitz. This is the result. Finishing in the fourth quarter has been a problem for this Ohio State team. AJ talks about it here with Chris. You talked about finishing, trouble finishing. Uh, what do you guys talk about? I mean, what do you do to establish? All right, we got a team down. It's time to put them away. I mean, let's go, boys. What do you guys do? What? Well, uh, it's it's not really any any big thing. I think we can work on the biggest thing that we have to just focus on little just the little things. You know, letting the guy catch a ball in the middle and missing a tackle or two, and letting him get 10 to 15 extra yards. And we have to we have to you know as we always talk about vision and break. And if if they catch a ball in front of us, we got to make the tackle and just you know do what we have to do at the end. Get turnovers especially. There's an example, Pam, about making a play in the fourth quarter. You have a team backed up, and you have to be able to finish the guy. You don't let a quarterback run the quarterback counter for 10 yards. You have to put a helmet on him. That time, nobody got a helmet on Brett Bazinet. Instead, Bazinet runs it up to the 15 for the first down. It is a 17-point lead as Noah Heron gets dragged down from behind by Will Smith. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, Ohio State, Mark D'Antonio is creative, and what he'll do is he's going to put Will Smith as a linebacker in that position. and show you where Will Smith. See, Will Smith is lined up as a linebacker now. He's a defensive end. They use Robert Reynolds to eat blocks. Will Smith uses his hands, takes the offensive guard, pushes him into the backfield, and makes a good tackle on a powerful back in Noah Heron. But that's, that's Will Smith's athletic ability, and that's why he is a future top-round NFL pick because of that versatility. So they've been trying to get Heron outside all day, and I don't recall it working even once. And that's like Smith able to snuff it out, second and ten. As an end of time, short pass, and here's a turn around to Rel Jordan, who was unable to bring it in. Jordan, a sophomore from Clarkston, Georgia. The problem, one of the problems Northwestern has had offensively today. They've moved the ball at times, but they're not getting themselves in position to convert on third down. I mean, there's no, I can't remember a lot of third and ones, third and twos, third and threes. There have been third, tens, and elevens. And, you know, you can only go to the war chest so often to find those third and ten, third and eleven plays that work. Unmanageable third downs. And this one is not one either. Third and ten. Three receivers to Bazinet's right. He has time to throw. Shows it. Throws it to a short guy, Roger Jordan, who flat out drops it. And it's Gamble and Allen closing. Bazinet has thrown for only 59 yards today. Northwestern averaging about 226 through the air. So they have not gotten anything going with their passing game. Yeah, the one thing, they have not attacked the middle of the field. They've really kind of stayed to the outside of the field. And I think now they have some of the corners outside getting a little nosy out there. The middle of the field might be open if they go to the sideline and say, hey, let, let's try to throw the ball in the middle of the field. It might work. Because it's not working throwing it outside. 
So on fourth and ten from their own 15, no choice but for Brian Hoffman to punt. And oh my, they, he gets that one away. And Gamble slips a tackle. And he's tackled down around the 47 yard line. Raven Jones, a backup linebacker, making the stop. So Northwestern continuing to struggle on offense, trailing the Buckeyes 17 0. For the third time in this game, Ohio State has taken over the football in Northwestern territory. First two times, though, they only were able to get three points out of it. They lead it 17 0. McMullen, plenty of time, and he threads the needle. Drew Carter for the first down. Here's Matt Weiner. Hi, fan member 23, Missouri at Kansas, and they take the kickoff in the third quarter and drive right down the field. Look at Darius Outlaw. Brad Smith did. He was wide open. Smith's eighth touchdown pass without an interception. Mizzou on top by one. All right, Missouri ranked, but always tough when you take on uh, one of your uh, border rivals, and that certainly is what Kansas is. Kansas is a team that Northwestern beat 28-20 in their opening game. McMullen is now split out wide with Smith as the quarterback, and Smith keeps it. We have a snap and run, says <laughs> Jim Trestle. Jim Trestle says, yeah, we have one, Randy Walker. We'll take one out of your playbook, and there's a snap and run to Troy Smith. As you mentioned, Smith is a guy who could very much be in the uh, future plans for Ohio State as they look for a replacement once both Krenzel and McMullen leave next year. Yeah, and he and uh, Justin's Wick were battling out this spring. They got a lot of playing time. You see, Craig, he wants to play. He felt, uh, he told me his elbow was about 90, 95 percent. Coach Tress kind of said, well, it's about 65 percent. Right. That's a big difference, that, that 30 percent difference. As Maurice Hall gets the carry on second and he gets stacked up. And if you are just joining us, uh, Craig Krenzel for the second straight game is not playing. Scott McMullen, the uh, senior, is starting for him as uh, we join you from Ohio State. Pam Ward along with Chris Spielman. And 23 straight times Ohio State has beaten Northwestern, well on their way to number 24. And uh, the total yards right now, Northwestern playing tough in the first half, but Ohio State starting to pile it up here in the second half. And, and one thing with Krenzel resting today, Chris, they have a bye week next week and then go to Wisconsin. So he gets an extra two weeks. And he needs to have his full arm strength to be able to go up to Madison and compete and play at his highest level. Oh, runs, runs into one of his own guys and goes down and runs into Shane Olivier. Big pants. Yeah, Big Shane got kind of driven back by Lauren Howard. Now, Lauren Howard is a tough guy that Northwestern defects in line. It's a quarterback draw. And what Shane has to do is force Lauren Howard outside. But Lauren gets his hands inside right here. Does a little spin move. Forces Shane back into Scott. Now, that's not a great read by Scott. And again, he's been effective running the ball, but not quite as effective as Craig Krenzel is. Mike Nugent in to try a 42-yard field goal. He had a 32-yarder back in the first quarter. And that one is perfect. He doesn't miss often. The mechanics of the field goal. Snap, hold, kick. Automatic with Mike Nugent and the Buckeyes. and a half minutes left to go in this game. Ohio State shutting out Northwestern 20 to nothing. Ohio State won last year in Evanston 27 to 16, a game in which Maurice Claret fumbled three times. But as you see, 20 points is the magic number. The Buckeyes, when they score 20 or more points, never lost to Northwestern. Northwestern has, has fought, fought hard today. He said they've got to eliminate penalties and get points in the red zone if they expect to win games on the road. And that is uh, Jason Wright making a rare mistake as he catches the ball on the two out of bounds. So that's where they take over. Two important SEC games to watch tonight at 745 on ESPN. Lou Holtz and South Carolina go into Knoxville as they try to upset unbeaten Tennessee, ranked number eight. And at 9 Eastern on ESPN2, LSU fresh off a huge win over Georgia, tries to keep its championship hopes alive as they take on the Mississippi State Bulldogs in Starkville. South Carolina, Tennessee, also available on ESPN HD, ESPN's new high-definition service. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Okay, Northwestern has time, and don't forget they have the no-huddle offense in their arsenal. Flags come down as Wright gets the ball. They've not used the no-huddle. They've 
use it less and less this year, Chris. Saw it a lot more last year. Yeah, and the reason why they wanted to take pressure off of their defense, but they do still practice it. And it, again, it's going to be a holding. Anytime the guy with the white hat and the striped shirt throws a flag back there, it's usually that call right there. No holding. A lot of holding calls by Northwestern today. Holding on the offense. Penalties decline. Second down. And this is a chance for Ohio State. They've been talking all week, living in this area, about how they need to finish games and bury people when they have them down. Well, this is their opportunity. And it's a chance for Northwestern to come out and make a statement saying, we're going down. If we go down, we're going down swinging. They are backed up now after the penalty. Baz and over the middle, and it clocks Bogan Reef, the tight end, right in the face. Yep, says it's my fault. It certainly was. Well, no, I had an isolation up there <laughs> on Chris Gamble. And what they tried to do is they tried to hit the slant and go on Chris Gamble. Chris Gamble has improved his cover corner techniques over the last period dramatically. Last year, he was just a raw athlete. This year, he's become the complete corner. But Bazinet did a good job recognizing that the receiver on a slant go was covered coming to the second receiver. But again, it's executing catch the ball. 38 from the three. Pass is complete to Heron, but that is nowhere close to the first down. And Northwestern, particularly here in the second half, as they've been backed up. Horrible field position. Well, that's what Ohio State does in, in their motto. And this, it's not pretty football, and that's why they, they don't capture the imagination of a lot of the national media. But they punt and play defense. Punt and play defense. Hey, guess what? Punt and play defense and score when you have field position. That's what they do. That's what they do best. They don't ask their quarterbacks to make mistakes. Don't win the game. Just don't lose it. Our defense will keep us in most games, and we'll win it in the end. That's what Jim Presser was emphasizing to us yesterday about McMullen. Just don't turn the ball over. Huffman is living dangerously. Gets that punt off. Oh, that's it. A meet and greet on Santonio Holmes. A good shot. Darrell Jenkins coming up with the hit. And good, and good job by San Antonio Holmes of catching the football. Not fair catching it, living a little dangerously. And last year, that would have been a penalty because of the halo rule. But because we don't have a halo rule, we got a slobber knocker, the first one of the day. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Advanced technology that gives you a grip on the future. Justin Zwick, the freshman quarterback, is back in for Ohio State as they lead this game 20 to nothing. Zwick came in when Ohio State had a 10 nothing lead. And that is a pass that is dropped. Wow. Yeah, here's Ziri had one wide open in his hands, and Justin Zwick delivers a fastball. And it looked like he had one hand out there. Should have been two. Ziri hit himself in the head for that one. Boy, that looked like a touchdown written all over it. Take a look and watch Justin. Here's the ball. The receivers go up with two hands. I don't know why he took his left hand down. And that's one where he has to turn his hands up. You don't catch the ball with your hands, palms turned out. Turn your hands up, use your hands, catch the ball. Justin threw a fastball in there. Should have been six points. It'll put a nice little lift for the redshirt freshman from Maslin, Ohio. He's been working for his first uh, touchdown pass in his career. There's a young freshman quarterback mistake to lay a game, get the call, and get going. Zwick is from Maslin, Ohio. Did not go to Maslin High School, though. But yeah. some good football players are coming out of Maslin, right? He's from Maslin, Did Washington he? High School, yeah. Oh, Maslin, Washington. I'm yeah, sorry. That, is that yeah. yours? Yeah, that's the that's Maslin. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to get my Ohio education yeah. up. Well, that's Tigers. Go Tigers, go. And they have in Maslin, Ohio, a real live Tiger as a mascot. I mean, that's serious. Yeah, it is. It's Ovi. I used to feed him when I was a player there. What'd you feed him? Raw meat. <laughs> That's what we shared lunches. That okay. day. <laughs> Out of the Spielman lunchbox. And on second down, that ball is tipped and almost intercepted as uh, Dominic Price was among those guys who, who got a hand on it. And uh, 
So Ohio State is going to win again, Chris. They're going to go to 5-0. and And as you said, it's they're not a pretty football team, but they're an effective football no, team. No, they weren't pretty last year, and all they did was win the national championship. And what they're really concentrating on how to finish, they're not going to wow you with fancy offenses and deep passes. They're going to play fundamentally sound football. They're going to play defense. They're going to punt. And they're going to score one and a half field position. That's the a offense. Jim Trestle coach team. That's what he's done in Youngstown. That's what he's doing here at Ohio State. Now, you, you do live here in Columbus, Chris, and, and, and hear a lot of the complaints. People wondering about the offense. They'd like to see it get a little bit more souped up. you think that's a long-term concern? I think it could be. As you, as you move on into the Big Ten and you might play some teams with a little more experience and a little more established in Northwestern, yeah, you want to be a little bit more balanced and have the ability to move the football because there's going to come a point in time where the offense is going to have to be able to put 25 or 30 up against their really top-ranked defense. And I don't know if they have that ability or not. It hasn't been answered yet. Swick on 3rd and 15, throws it to Hartsock. He's had an act today, and he is into uh, Northwestern territory. Chris Spielman was a uh, linebacker here at Ohio State, Oh, three six. 3-6. Yeah, I almost missed the quarterback. I was so fired up, I jumped over his head. Can't believe I caught one. <laughs> How many did you drop? Well, I dropped a few in my day. <laughs> More than I care to remember. That's Ricky Foggy. He was a great Big Ten quarterback. That's right, at Minnesota, yeah. So uh, Chris Spielman, a terrific All-American linebacker here. And great NFL career as well. First game that Chris has ever broadcast here, even though he's been doing Big Ten games for three years. They finally got you home. Yeah, it's, a, it's been exciting. I'm glad we had a good football game. I'm glad the way Northwestern's fighting. Oh, my. Is that you? That's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Ohio State. Stadium that seats over 101,000 people. Just a gorgeous place to see a football game. And they're watching their hometown team win. As reverse now, Roger Jordan, the wide receiver, gets it. Let's check that. It's Ashton Akins, number two. Northwestern now, you either got to play with some sense of urgency. They're going to their no-huddle offense. Remember, this was their package last year. Not as much this year, but they still practice it weekly. Mike Dunbar is their offensive coordinator. Akins gets dragged down by Will Allen. Coming up Sunday night, we got two high-scoring offenses in the National Football League. Peyton Manning, Edron James, and the Colts visit Aaron Brooks and the New Orleans Saints, 8.30 Eastern time on ESPN, available nationwide on ESPN HD. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Patrick, can't get to that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that ball was tipped, or Chris Gamble had another great break on the ball. And what I have not seen Northwestern do is they've not run any square ends, any deep digs, any check downs, any posts. They've been working the outside of the field. That's tough on a quarterback to make that far of a throw consistently. Thus, you don't have great success on third downs if you don't work the middle of the field. It's Will Smith who got a hand on that last pass. Brian Huffman getting a workout, his seventh punt today. As Antonio Holmes is back deep. As Chris Gamble no longer is, uh, is back. Calling out the dogs a bit as Ohio State as they lead by 20 with five minutes and 38 seconds left to go in this game. Again, now Coach Trestle will not hesitate to put some of his younger players in. Even this game is not over. He still wants to get his younger players in. He has many guys experience playing in front of 100,000 with some noise against the number one defense of Northwestern Wildcats if he can. 104,680 in attendance with us today. And here's the schedule. We're talking about the bye week. Then you get into that meet of that uh, Big Ten at Wisconsin. And then they host Iowa, a team that everybody wishes they would have played last year finish uh, on the 22nd against Michigan, but uh, week off, Craig Krenzel should be ready to go. Well, I watched him throw yesterday, and I, I, I tend to lean to Coach Trestle's side. I don't think he was 90%. He's more like 60 to 70, but talking to the trainer, they feel he's going to be 100% by the time they get up to Madison. And that will be two weeks from today as Guilford electrifies his crowd with that run. Picks up the uh, first down, and here's, here's a look at uh, Krenzel yesterday throwing at the indoor practice facility. Well, he obviously wasn't throwing any fastballs here, but he wants to be 100% healthy. And Scott McMullen, and as I predicted, because I know the, the traits of Scott McMullen, he came in and had a solid game, and Craig wants to get healthy quick. He's the starting quarterback. 
He's 18 and one as a starter, and one of those has a an asterisk by it because he only played the first series and he was out. So he's really not been beaten as a starting quarterback here at Ohio State. Offensive MVP when they beat uh, Miami for the national championship. And Krenzel, such a battler as Guilford goes down. He said one of the reasons you wanted to play today is so that when he goes to Wisconsin, he didn't want to be off for a full month, which is basically what he would have missed. It's uh, you know four weeks of work, so he really wanted to play today. And I talked to former OSU quarterbacks Jim Kersadis and Mike Tomczak before the game, and I asked them that very question. And they said, yeah, timing is going to be a concern, but that's up to him and the scout team. That's why the emphasis on getting good looks and practice are so important. So I'm sure Craig will talk to some of the scout teams and say, hey, I need your best efforts so I can be ready to play when we go to Madison. Boy Smith, last time it was a snap and run it. Quarterback. Quarterback we've seen today. And uh, that is a snap and run, but a possible delay coming up against Ohio State. Prior to the snap. Delay of game, offense. Young Five quarterbacks. Remains second down. That's what I said. Jim Tressel said we have that play in our offense, just like Randy Walker. User, I guess that kind of the evolution of the quarterback, Pam, and you really see it with Dante Culpepper and Michael Vick, the guys that uh, Brunel in his younger days, Steve Young when he was playing. Guys that really have the ability to be a run pass threat. They're starting to put plays in, even in the pros, running plays from quarterbacks with design blocking schemes. Zwick is back in as we saw Smith go to the sideline, and Tressel spoke with him right away. That pass is complete. Bam Childress, who gets up and gets an extra yard or two into Northwestern territory. Justin Zwick is more of the pure passer. And we saw in the first quarter when he had the same route, he had the little elbow hitch and delivered, didn't deliver the ball on time. The play was broken up. This time, Bam Jordan is going to push up the field to come back on a quick curl. There's the quick curl, and Bam, he gets a strike, and he does not go down. This guy's a dangerous little threat when he catches the football. Bam Chodos is, is, I don't know if he'll be in the NFL, but he's perfect for the Arena Football League. <laughs> that type of guy, a water bug type guy. The numbers on him and the arena football coming here to Columbus. Yeah, Coach Earl Bruce is going to be the head coach of the Columbus Destroyer. Team moving to Buffalo. We had with the uh, right guard, Bryce Bishop, jumped a little bit early. So Earl Bruce, who recruited you to come here to Ohio State, we had a, <laughs> you had a chance nice to story visit with him that, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Now you uh, kept him on pins and needles before you told him where you were going to school. Oh, you know, he, he's exaggerating that a little bit. <laughs> said you call him. He said, "Call me before midnight." You called him at 1:30 in the morning. And he said, you made up your mind. And he said he waited and waited and waited. And it seemed like, what, 20 seconds it sounded like from his side yeah, of the story? And finally he said, I'm a buck up. Yeah, and he says, well, I'm going to get you when you get down here for making me wait. <laughs> did he get you? Yeah, he did. A couple <laughs> times. <laughs> it's, it, it is nice at the football facility here. You see a lot of the old Buckeye uh, coaches and former players. Uh, the tradition really does live on, doesn't it? Well, it's, it's a brotherhood. You know, it's something that doesn't leave you. Once you're in the house, they guy. You're always an Ohio State guy, and you're kind of interconnected with these guys, and there's a connection and a bond that I believe is special. And I, I compare it to, like, North Carolina basketball or Maryland basketball or whatever. All the great tradition, it, it, it's something that you're connected with. And it's I told talk to some of the players and said, whether you like it or not, whether you like me or not, it doesn't matter, man. We're brothers, and we're brothers for life, and that's the way it is, and that's the feeling that they have here at Ohio State. And then a lot of former players here. Jim Lachey, now a radio broadcaster. We saw Mike Tomzak earlier today. Guys, come back. Henry Patrick lets it go again, and this time, mercifully for Northwestern, they don't have to stop and start from the two or three on that 54-yard punt. Now, he, now, B.J. Sanders done a good job. No? Andy Groom was the uh, second-rated punter in the country last year. Now, B.J. Sanders come back and filled in nicely. Let's take a look what's coming up at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. That's the bottom of the hour. Pittsburgh and Texas A&M, that's our BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. Others in regional action will see Notre Dame and Purdue, Wake Forest at Virginia, and Washington State at Oregon. Those are your choices. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Pittsburgh upset by Toledo last week as the MAC continues to really be a, a fun league to watch. Good football players. And the only difference between the MAC and the Big Ten is the second 11. The first 11 are pretty even. The second 11 players, meaning depth, aren't quite as strong as the Big Ten. Now, Alexander Webb has come in. First time he's thrown today. That's incomplete. Here's Matt Weiner. Hi, Pat. Thank you very much. Florida at Kentucky, and the Gators 
in danger of slipping right out of the top 25. Remember Derek Abney burned him for two kick return touchdowns last week. He takes the end around here, takes it all the way inside the 10, set up another Arliss Beach touchdown, 21-3 cats. Abney, boy, he is dangerous every time he uh, touches the football. Kind of like Tim Dwight. Yeah. San Diego Chargers. Dwight, a former Iowa guy, right? Yep. As uh, Webb goes down. Northwestern next week will be at home against Minnesota. And uh, Chris and I will be there. That will be our noon game, noon Eastern time game next week. See if they can rebound against a Golden Gopher team playing Penn State today. Here's Randy Walker's schedule, the way it stacks up for him. At Indiana, then the bye week. Big Ten, boy, just relentless week after week. The parody in the Big Ten is uh, very similar to the Big East and Big 12. All the top conferences, the guys are getting better and better, and teams are getting closer and closer, and they're well coached. Northwestern takes a timeout here with two minutes and 27 seconds left to go in the game. Randy Walker coming in in his now in his fifth year at Northwestern, ten, just 10 and 22 against the Big Ten. And this is, uh, this is surprising that Ohio State has not had a shutout since 1998 against anybody and has not shut out Northwestern since 1980 when they squeaked by him 63 to nothing. Yeah, and they probably shouldn't be shutting out Northwestern today, except Northwestern's have, having trouble at least executing the ability to kick field goals. And another reason why it is surprising because of the great defense at Ohio State plays but I think the growth of the kicker in college football and, and the leg strength that these guys have. I mean, we watch warm-ups a lot of times before uh, games, man. Guys are booting them in from 60. And that's always uh, difficult to shut a team out that has great field goal kicking. And that's, again, the evolution of football in the, in the, the kicking game. And the average score, it's not going to be as bad today. The last 11 home games, it was downright ugly. Now just a 20-point lead, but a uh, little solace for Northwestern. We dropped to two and three on the season and own one in the Big Ten. And speaking of drop, that's exactly what happened to Alexander Webb, Mike Kudler there. You know, you know, one of the differences that Ohio State has over Northwestern is depth. And it almost looks like clones are coming off the bench. Here's Mike Kudla coming from a defensive end. He beats the offensive tackle with a straight speed rush and seems secure in that tackle first. And here you, you see big Tim Shaver coming in trying to knock the ball out. There's a, just a speed rush. Nothing big. Webb has trouble getting out. He does a good job, though, of protecting the football. It's Joel Penton coming in and cleaning up. And Quinn Pitcock. Kudla's first ever sack in college football as Ohio State takes a timeout. We got more football coming your way tonight at 7.45 Eastern on ESPN. Lou Holtz in South Carolina go to Knoxville as they try to upset number eight Tennessee, playing good football at 3-0. and And at 9 Eastern on ESPN2, LSU looks to keep its championship hopes alive as they take on Mississippi State. South Carolina, Tennessee also available on ESPN HD, ESPN's new high-definition service. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV or a local cable operator to get ESPN HD. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. And that ESPN HD, that stuff looks good. Yeah. Man. It's strong. Very, very it's strong. Like playing football right there. I know. You can get up close slobber knockers. Yes. Which, in case yeah. you're not up with Chris Spielman vocabulary, that is what, a big hit, a ridiculous no, hit? It's a, it's a good hard hit, and it's when spit flies. I mean, that's a slobber knocker. <laughs> the spit flies out of the helmet, it goes all over the place, it's on the guy's chin strap, it's on his eyeballs, it's in his nose. Slobber knocker. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, is that an original for you? or? Uh, I don't know if it's an original. Your own language. A, I, well, you know, I was going to throw another one out at you, but that, of course, was vetoed by our, <laughs> our fine producer down there who said, maybe you just want to stay with Slobberknocker. <laughs> College Game Day Now, presented by Acura. That is uh, coming up next with Matt Weiner. As uh, we get another look at Brian Huffman, his eighth punt today. Oh, and that one is right to the sidelines for Ohio State as a flag comes down. Again, a penalty on Ohio State, but guess what? If you're Jim Trestle, you don't mind it because it's an aggressive penalty. And what he's trying to do in his football team is establish a finish mentality. And when you have a team down, you bury him. That's the way it goes. He went for the block there. It came up short and roughed the kicker. Good call by the official. It gives Northwestern a chance to get back on the field and get some offense going and put some points on the board. When you talk about the field goal problems for... Northwestern. They have no field goals this year. Slade Larshide is their freshman 
kicker. He missed from 35 and 47 today. Missed a 20-yarder earlier in the season. And Brian Huffman, the punter, they've had trouble getting punts off. He's had one block last week, two on the season, and uh, four in his career. Yeah, one of the problems I see with their punt pro is that, that, that normally a punter's got to be at 15 kicker. yards. On the receiving team. That's a five-yard penalty. We'll replay fourth up. It'll be interesting if, if uh, the Buckeyes decide to come after this punt, but watch where the punter lines up. Normally, you like your punter at 15 yards. If he's a one-step punter, then you might sneak him up to 13. But if, if, if the punter is lined up at 12 yards initially and he's a two- or three-step punter, obviously, common sense tells you that's a shorter distance to go for the defense to get to the block point. And that often, if you don't have a guy that can snap it back there 15 yards consistently, then you got to line a guy up closer. Field goal-wise, go to the soccer team, man. Start holding open tryouts. I mean, Kathy Ireland did it in necessary roughness. <laughs> it's a movie. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that movie. It was very believable, too, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's uh, Huffman getting that punt off. Actually, when he gets the punt off, he does a pretty good job. As Holmes is, is knocked down at the 38-yard line. You're going to get your first lick at you know, Troy Smith and Justin Zwick possibly in the game at the same time. Now, every time Troy Smith has lined up a quarterback, it's been the old Jim Tristan says, we'll copy your play book, Randy Walker. We'll do the snap and run. But Troy has the ability to throw the football. In fact, he lit it up in the spring game. He was a freshman out of Cleveland. Yeah. So Ohio State just playing out the string now up 20 to nothing with a minute 42 left they are about to go to 5 and 0 on the season and smith showing some of that 50 footwork as we send it back to nifty Matt one all right, Pam, a little closer game going on over on ESPN right now. Minnesota up 20-14, but you see 28 seconds left, and Penn State has the ball. Nittany Lions driving down by six in Happy Valley. They are now on the 15-yard line. Good one going on in uh, State College. Marion Barber, strong game. Coming up next, Matt will get you up to date on that game and all the others on College Game Day now, presented by Acura on ESPN2. And when we're finished here, switch over to ESPN News. We will have a post-game extra. Northwestern and Ohio State put a, put a nice ribbon on this ball game. Zwick back in quarterback. And they're off. Ira Guilford has gotten uh, quite a bit of work here in the second half. Again, valuable experience. You're getting a lot of young players. Justin Zwick, Ira Guilford didn't get much playing time. But to get him in the game early, like Jim Trestle did the second half, to help those guys down the line in the future just in case something happens they'll go in and having their feet wet a little bit not going in cold jim tressel can uh wait out the bye week and then they go in to play wisconsin they hope with a healthy with Prenzel. some other players who've been nicked up as well can come back darren scott not playing today because of a bad ankle defensive lineman and that'll do it for the 24th straight time, Ohio State has defeated Northwestern. This time by the final of 20 to nothing. The Wildcats only crossed midfield twice in this game. Missed a couple of field goals, and Ohio State getting a touchdown from Lydell Ross and also Ryan Hamby. A couple of field goals from Mike Nugent, and they win it 20 to nothing. Coming up next is College Game Day now, presented by Acura. Chris and I can see you also on ESPN News for a post-game extra. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Another win for Ohio State. Goodbye from Columbus.